Hello. I, uh... Yeah, yeah. that's your yeah. name. Squirrels got me. Big Jim. Yeah. <laughs> Cold and fun. That's good that you think that of it because that's what deer hunting typically is, is cold and fun. Yeah. <laughs> Yesterday morning, I'm glassing up on the pass and I see these deer moving. And I'm like, ooh, there's deer moving. All of a sudden, I just see this person just head down, just hauling ass wearing shorts and a t-shirt with a pack on. And I'm like, I'm like, is that hard? My dad always talks about floating through the woods like the autumn breeze. So, so Robert's When you're the 275 pounds, I don't know how you do that, but. The Freightliner? <laughs> it's just like a creeper. He's kind of up in the corner watching what's going on down there. Yeah. You know? He's like. You know, he's up there slapping it, pissing all over everything. Is it warm yet? <laughs> How did you know the name of the actor? That's right. I know. Why did you say his name? Her- Herve Velichos. <laughs> you know what pertinier means? If you know what pertinier means and you live in America, you're a redneck too. Welcome to the Log Talk Podcast brought to you by Pertinier Outdoors. It's that time of year. It's that time of year where we all need to be thinking about, do we have everything we need to hit the woods? Chances are you don't, and if you think you do, you probably could use some more. So how about you go over to thehuntworks.com and check out all the incredible products these guys are carrying. Uh, This is a great family, local store. Uh, Dan and Steve Dunnigan, a couple hardworking some bitches. They are now carrying archery equipment, everything from bows to arrows to broadheads, quivers, you name it. So on top of all the great tree stands and box blinds that they're carrying, they're now a full, full-on full archery dealer and really recommend that you check these guys out for your next big purchase. Uh, head over to thehuntworks.com to see what they've got for sale or if you're local in the Rochester area, head on over to their store in East Rochester on Despatch Drive and check them out. They are on social media, The Huntworks, and also online, like I said. And if you purchase anything online, you can use promo code FEEDNEM to get f- Five percent off, and that's F E E D feed in I N U M five percent off. Feed them. Hey, everybody, Big Willie back with you, episode 206. Normally, Billy does an episode pre deer season every year called Beers on the Deck. It's with Dallas and Brian, but we don't have uh, Brian, we don't have Billy and we don't have beer, so it's just on the deck, and it's me and Dallas and Emma. Emma is uh, only mildly impressed with turkey hunting. <laughs> I asked her about her bird. She's like, "Yeah, yeah, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll shoot more." But uh, yeah, she she had a good hunt. We'll yeah. t- we can talk a little bit about that. Emma also had an awesome hunt. One of the highlights of my season was after the rainiest freaking day of hunting. Over in Avon at Little Little Iowa. Little Iowa, yeah. And uh, we're unloading our guns. And <laughs> that tells I hear, Emma, unload this. <laughs> okay, well, it's not my fault. No, it wasn't your fault. It was cool as heck. I mean, you just like, you know, you take that thing, boom, let her go. And all the guys were like, way to go, Emma. Oh, it rocked her. I mean, it was almost knocked her over backwards. Yeah, it, it, it kicked, didn't it? It came back so hard. Yeah, because yeah. you never shot that off. I was going to say, before. have you shot that like that before or off, of, you know? She normally is on a rest shooting at a deer. Yeah. And, you know, when you shoot at a deer, he, you know, plus the the rest, you're leaning into it. So yeah. it doesn't kick yeah. you back. But even the re- – you still get a good recoil. But, but you you don't register it because no. you're so focused in the moment, right? No, because I asked her, like, did you feel anything? And she's like, no, it wasn't loud or anything. You know, just <laughs> – That yeah, was that, awesome. That was funny because she just stepped right up there all as confident as could be. Rip the gun right up to her shoulder and let her eat. Hey, I give another. Oh, I'm on channel four. That's why. Okay. That's all right. We'll go with it. I'm looking at one going, why is my audio not live? And it's because I'm on four. I must have plugged in wrong there. Hang on. Test one, two. That's better. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. Still? Yep. Yeah. You hear me, Emma? All right. I had my wires crossed, no pun intended, but I did. Uh, 
So we should do, uh, like everybody knows Dallas. Dallas is a regular. He's like the co-host of the show. Now, Bill, look at them two little ugly uh, Billy, you want to be on? Bill Dan standing in the door looking out. Told him he could be on and tell us about his aspirations for the season. <laughs> but we have Emma, and Emma's, uh, you know, some of you may recognize her from when she was much younger. And she's on our intro when Billy asked her what she thinks of deer hunting, and she said it's cold and wet. <laughs> I've listened to that. So we have Emma with us, and Emma actually did some deer hunting of her own last year. She went to PA, not with the gang, not with our big gang, but she went Never with going back there again. Jeez. You're not going back there? I hate it there. There's no deer. <laughs> oh, really? You didn't see enough deer? No. Well, well the- this is right off the bat. This is the dilemma with kids. Because you want to take them hunting, and you don't want to make it too easy for them, but you want them to have a good experience and see deer. Yeah. So well, it's almost like fishing. You can't take them fishing. On a bad day of fishing, it'll ruin a kid from fishing. Uh, yeah. It's like you got to take them somewhere where something's hitting that hook all the time, you know, at, so, at a young age. Right. So we got down there, and, I mean, honestly, we did not see a lot of deer in three trips, but we had two close calls where we almost, you know, we had deer within range, and we just didn't get a shot. So then I brought her home, and started hunting in, over food plots and in a blind, you know, and then it's. Emma's it's, like, I hate PA. Yeah. <laughs> so like even then it will, it's still, will, it's still not easy. I and mean, there's a right. lot that goes into it, but it's mostly my work in the summertime that goes <laughs> into whoa, it. Whoa, 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 No. Well, the first time we went you to PA. You put some work into it in the yes, summer? Yes, of course. Good for you. The first time we went to PA, our, uh, we had to hike up this like, I'm calling it Mount Everest, but like we had to go up it and I could have sworn like four times that we were almost at the top. We yeah, definitely and, weren't. And, and then, then there's another pouring. top. Yep. It started pouring. That it's rugged country. Uh, yeah. Well, I messed up right away. Of course, it, you know I just can't do anything half-ass in PA. I got to go for it. You know. Right. Yeah. We're on a freaking doe hunt with two kids. Yeah. You know, me You're and like, Rob. We're going up top of that mountain. Well, we went. We never hunted this area before because we could only get D maps in a different area. So we we e scouted it. That was about it. Rob had been in there a little bit. In in the past, but uh, we we e scouted it and came up with a plan and decided to walk like you couldn't hunt right near where we parked. You had to walk like a mile to get into some some better terrain. Yeah, so we did that and it was kind of just lightly raining on and off all day. It was pouring when we got there, but we didn't get out till after it stopped raining. So we kind of thought we were okay. So we my. What I told everybody is like, all right, we got the kids with us. We don't want to go through anything too difficult, you know, no big mountain climbs or anything like that. <laughs> then he takes you up a mountain, right, Emma? Yes. <laughs> so we go like, yeah, you know, probably a, a good mile from the trucks, and we split up, and we just start hunting slowly off of the road. And uh, by the time we finished what we were going to do, it was like at 2 o'clock maybe, something like yeah. that. So, So I said to to Rob, I go, you know, by the time we walk all the way back to the truck, pack up our shit, and move somewhere else, it's right. going to be like a... The day's done. The day's done. You know, we're going to get out of the truck and sit next to the road somewhere and not see any deer. I'm like, you know, why don't we send Rob back to the truck and have him move? Because you know how I like to always do it is you go in deep, and then you go, like, down and up and across to yeah. another road. And then, and and then come in from that road. And you have a truck waiting up at that road. Yeah. So I said, Rob, go, go over there with the truck and... And park, and you hunt towards us, and we'll go down. We're already part way down this ravine, and you know we'll go down across that creek and come back up the other side. Well, we start hunting down, and the rain starts coming down more and more and more. It's raining, so we get down to the bottom, and the creek is all beaver dammed up. Oh, God. oh, this, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, and there's a there's a trail down there with markers on it where you can see that people have been hiking. So I'm like, we'll just turn and go downstream a little ways, and we'll eventually find something we could cross. Find the crossing, yeah. Yeah, well, we found No, we be- crossed the whole lake. <laughs> we <laughs> we ended up crossing just below a beaver dam, and we got through it. And it was kind of fun, actually, wasn't it? That part of it. Yeah, happened. but then we walked more, and there was a bridge. So, like, there was no point of that. Uh, oh, way there was up, a bridge? Way right? up further there yeah. was, and that's where Kurt met us. Well, by the time we met up with Kurt and Nate, it was pouring. So this was uh, Sam's younger brother. Nate was with us. Okay. Because the kids that weren't 12, the reason we picked that, this is an October rifle hunt for the kids, for antlerless deer. This was last year? Yeah. And you were, Emma, 12 last year? Or? She was 11 at this 11, time. 11, okay. And that's why we went, was because 
in PA, you can get what they call the Metroid Youth um, yeah. Hunting uh, License. Okay. So for out of state, it was like three dollars and ninety cents or something like that. Really? For, yeah. For her, a non-resident for I'm gonna yeah. go down. It was three dollars nine. Did you have to have a tag? Which you were gonna buy a tag anyway. Yeah, but I couldn't hunt because the way the rules are. It's really cool. I mean, it's totally, like, I've been looking at this for a couple of years, so I just have to be a mentor, and she's a mentored youth, so I have to be a, a licensed hunter, I guess. I guess I had to have a Which tag. Which would make sense. You would you would have to have a tag, but you're not but it, hunting. Right. So, so this is the time in October, there's a week where you can hunt uh, antlerless deer or bear with a muzzleloader. It's during our, you can still archery hunt regular, but you can also use a muzzle loader for, for bear or antlerless deer. If, if for your youth. This no, is no, just this or, is for everybody. Oh, okay. okay. But, so that's, that's why it's muzzle loader. But gotcha. if you're, if you are a junior hunter or a senior hunter or a dis- disabled or a, I think a military veteran, you can use what they call a special weapons or special firearm zone or something like that, which means you can use whatever is legal during the normal Really? Regular season, okay. so that's why the eleven year olds were able to carry rifle. Oh, so you had an actual rifle you go with, like, yeah. You're shooting. Well, we had actually had Billy's Ruger two twenty three. Nice, yeah. So, back to the story. We are now all the way down the mountain into the bottom in a beaver dam, pouring rain about an hour and a half before dark. Yeah, typical Dallas this is, story. This, this is, is PA hunting it, with Dallas. It folks. took me less than half a day to get everybody into some deep shit. <laughs> <laughs> then Should I kids included. That, yeah, and and luckily those kids are they're they're pretty tough, you know. Yeah. Like we were still having fun. We were down there taking pictures by the Beaver Dam and stuff like that. Did you cross on the Beaver Dam? No. Could you walk across? Sometimes a game will use the Beaver Dam as a trail yeah. crossing. These weren't wide enough. Bill Dan, you want to come out? You can come out and sit and listen with us. Come on out, buddy. You, there's a chair for you. You can come out and listen. You don't have to sit in there and listen. My wife and I are out here at Billy's. Grandma and Grandpa are doing a little, little watching the kids here on uh, on Friday. So we're at Billy's, and I told Bill Danny to come out and join us, but he was sitting in the other, listening through the screen door. So welcome, Billy. You're gonna listen to the story. Dale's just telling the story about how he got Emma in a pickle. So here we are, lost in the woods, Bill. So, per usual. <laughs> any rate, <we've, laughs> I couldn't find Kurt and Nate because our GPSs weren't working down there. Could get him on the radio though, and he was telling me where to cross, and I was like, "No, no, no, you're." I was telling him where we he was in the wrong spot, and it was me, surprisingly, but it was. <laughs> <laughs> so we finally meet up with him, get across, back across the creek, and. uh now it's like, you know, we got to get up all the way back up and back to the truck. And now, when you get back up, is the road right on top of the hill or is it back away? No, no. <laughs> it must be earlier in the day than I thought because, because <coughs> now that I remember, excuse it, me, we did make it back to the truck in the rain. But we're climbing up the side of a mountain, just as steep as could be, and it's all ferns and it's pouring rain. And you know what ferns are, right? Like they're almost, oh almost Best experience in my life. Almost knee high, <laughs> soaking wet. So there's no. Is that miserable? Well, it was pouring, and then on top of us crossing the freaking beaver dam or whatever, so we were already wet. My pants were soaked, and then it just started raining, and then I had to hike. So I didn't like that. Yeah, that, that's a tough combination. And we're not even hunting at this point. I got the rifle yeah, over you're my just shoulder, walking, right? yeah. and we're going. And uh, yeah, eventually we made it a little bit before. You know, they honestly the the kids to their credit, they didn't complain or anything. They just got back in the <laughs> yeah, truck yeah. and uh so I never finished the, telling you about the the mentored youth thing. So anyways, um oh maybe I did. Yeah, cuz they can hunt with rifles antlerless only. So that was the thing is we were hunting in a in a place where we I wasn't familiar with and didn't, you know, so it was more of a scouting trip than yeah, anything. Yeah. Yeah. So that <laughs> take the kids along. In case so now we get back. It's day one. We get back to the hotel and we're just you know soaked. So we had fortunately they had a little laundry room and they let us go in there and use the the dryer. And while we had dinner, where'd you stay? We stayed at the Laurelwood in okay. Cottersport. Okay. That's where we used to stay back, back in the when early you first days. Started, yeah, in the early yeah. days. And then we moved from there to a the Millstream Inn, which was yeah. a newer, much nicer motel. But uh, the Laurelwood. 
It was decent. Yeah, but served a purpose. We, we found a room that had three beds in it, so it was like two doubles, and then uh, there was a third bed there for Rob. Nice. So we were all able to share one room yeah, for sure. two nights. Yeah. We hunted the next day, and we had a better day the next the next what day. What you do, hunt like a Friday, Saturday? Can you hunt Sundays on that one? I know no. Pennsylvania's weird on, not weird, but they're restricted on their Sunday hunting. I mean, they've gotten to the point where they're better than some other states that don't yeah. allow any Sunday hunting. Yeah, they are, they are starting to give give a little on that. It's just three three that you can hunt, so it wasn't this one. So, yeah, we left Sunday morning. So, I don't know. That was our, that was our first time down there, and then we came so back. So, you guys, none of the kids got anything? No, we had a couple of close calls, but uh, we had, in the beginning of that debacle, before we we started dropping down and, we were waiting for Kurt and Nate, and they bumped two does right past us like 40 yards, but they were flying. <laughs> oh, my gosh, yes. We were just sitting there waiting, and all of a sudden I was like, oh, there's a deer right there. Well, there was right actually two. Yeah. I wasn't going to be able to shoot them there too fast. It was two full-size does, and so I handed her the rifle, and I guess that's the last thing I was going to say was that I have to carry the gun everywhere. So that makes it oh, so that okay. I can't hunt because – Now, that's funny because when you were talking about going up the hill and you were just yeah. carrying the gun, you, I was like, God, should you be doing that? You're getting in trouble. No, so that's in actually a mentored the rule. hunt, you – Yes. Actually, possess a firearm. Yep. Hand it to the shooter. At she the has to be. Time. She she has to be. We have to be hunting on the ground. I have to be with her, or at least within talking distance. And she can hold the gun once we sit down and take position. Get and we're in a hunting position, but we can't be up in a stand or anything like that. Which is youth hunting kind of everywhere. Which with a, which I think is stupid. Because why wouldn't you want to have a kid up in a tree stand? You're right I mean, there. At least like an elevated stuff. blind or something right, like right. that, right? So. It, we're right there, but, like, it's safer, really. They can, uh, you know, elevated position where they can see better. They're shooting down. They're shooting downwards. It should right. be a safer shot, even if they don't make a good shot. It, you know, right. it should as far be as right. other people, it's safer because you're not at ground level. You're always going to have a better background when you're elevated, right? Background, yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely. So that's, like I said, I couldn't hunt because I, I could have hunted with a muzzleloader if I had had a – I didn't bother to buy a D-map because I, I knew she was going to be the hunter – so I, I would have had to hunt with a muzzle loader, but we have, but I can't carry two guns, only the one. And you so, really, if you're, uh, it sounds to me like on this mentored hunt, you need to focus on the youngster that you yeah. got out, or the. That's yeah. only for uh, the when the mentored is that for like first time hunters as well. No, or is it only for youngsters? It's so, um, again, really cool. There's no minimum age to be a mentored youth. It's just basically whenever you're ready. But up until seven. Oh, really? The parent gets to kind of decide when it's appropriate? Yeah, because they don't need a um, hunter safety course because they can at that age. Right? So so we, yeah, could he take, could, we could take Bill then this year. I mean, he's going to yeah. be in third grade, I think, is it, Bill? <laughs> no, he's in first grade. So as Another matter, year or two, though, we'll get you down there, Bill. So seven or younger, they they can actually use your tag. You could, oh, okay. if they killed a, a, if he killed a buck. So like Maya you, could go and like Julia they yeah. can go? They could hunt, yeah. And you would just, you could actually give them a tag. You'd have to sign over your own. Yeah, you'd use your tag on it. Yeah, but up until seven, and then they can get their own tag. And then they can go junior hunter as the age is 12 through 16 in PA. So this year I'm going to buy her a junior hunter. It'll cost a little bit more, but this way I don't have to be with her all the time. So if I want to just leave her and, you know, even if we want to sit on opposite sides of the ridge from each other or something where. Get some space. Just to, yeah, look down opposite sides, you know, she can have a gun and I can have one. And uh, so, anyways, yeah, 12 through 16 is a junior hunter, but you can still be a mentored youth up until so, like, once you buy that tag so many times, they don't let you anymore, then you have to buy the junior hunter. Okay, yeah, makes sense. <clears throat> In which case. So you could start out as a mentored hunter and be within that junior hunter age range. You, yeah. You could be 14 or 13. Yeah, and I think you can actually be older and still be a mentor. No, it, they not a mentored youth anymore, but still a mentored hunter. Yeah. There is a way. That's what I was wondering if they have a mentored hunter program. So what it allows you to do so is. like you could take Rob on that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, Rob. Don't get all, get your shorts all twisted up here. <laughs> No, that's disabled. No. <laughs> <laughs> she picks on Rob mercilessly oh, when we're, you do when too, we're huh? hunting together. What is it with Rob? We all can't. Yeah. He's just an easy target. I love Rob. And he, and he takes dude. it well. He does. He does. He's a good dude. So, well, so that's interesting, though, that you could like start off mentoring someone, a brand new hunter. So and I'd have to read the regulations again. I'm, I'm, I'm remembering back a year, but. Right. 
As I recall, that would allow you to take out a new hunter who doesn't have a hunter safety yet. And that way you could give them a hunting experience before they went through the whole process of getting their hunter safety course and buying a license and all that stuff. Cause there's a lot that goes into that. That makes, and then if you go out and you're like, I really don't like this, you just wasted a lot of time. Right. right. Or it makes you more dedicated to getting and going through that yeah, process. Yeah. Right. Right. It'll, it'll either really commit you to it or it'll help you understand you don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, that's good. That sounds, Pennsylvania's got, a, I love PA after, uh, you know, a yeah. couple times I've been down there with you guys. Yeah. It is, it's grueling. Yeah. At times, but it can, it's, it can be, but it doesn't need to be. No. You know, I mean, there's how many times, dozens of times over the years, I've been just driving down one of those roads in daylight and it had a shooter buck cross right in front of my truck. Yeah. You know, I mean, you could literally sit right off the road and yeah, which a lot of right guys spot. do. We've seen that. That's mostly when what we go way back do, in. Yeah. We don't see people. We see some, we see, but most of the most majority of them are, are like cruising the roads. Yeah, and, and the, we're not talking for anybody listening. We're not talking roads like the road going by your house right, right. now. We're talking like log access. Yeah. They're, pub- they- they're public roads, but they're two yeah. tracks mainly. Yeah. You, know, you can get a little wider, but they're two track public roads, so you have to follow normal. Obviously, you couldn't. Road rules. Yeah, everything. you couldn't have a loaded gun in your truck, even if you weren't on a road. Right. But um, but it's know, very but you, rural. But you are on a road, but you yeah, you're not. You'll drive miles where you see a house or anybody living up there. But but you know, a lot of guys kind of cruise. I mean, the scenery is like, yeah, it's it's unbelievable. It, right. It's it's amazing. Yeah. I don't think and people... that's what a great place to start the kids off. Other than that, you know, the train's a little rough, and I'm sure there's place. I mean, any place in PA you go that uh, the public land probably isn't going to be. You know, you're not going to have the field edges and the food plots quite so much. You know, that's the thing. There's no concentration of there is a concentration of deer, but you have to be like us and go and find them and and move them because yeah. you know we move them accidentally. You know, right? You don't know who's going to run into a dozen deer, but somebody's gonna. Yeah. You know. Put enough people out there and cover yeah. enough ground, somebody's going to bump them. And th- that's the number one complaint I hear from hunters, not only in Pennsylvania, but all over whitetail country, is is that there's not enough deer. The DEC, the DNR took too many deer. They gave out too many tags. It's it's universal everywhere you go, you know. I, I heard a podcast about a guy who spent the whole podcast bitching about Iowa, and he's a well-known, like, YouTube hunter. Yeah bitching about how bad the regulations are in Iowa and how they're going to kill all the deer here soon. So it's a universal thing, right? Right. It's just harder to see deer when you're hunting in the big woods. It doesn't mean they're not there. Oh, they're the there. sign tells you that they're there. Yeah. The trail cameras tell you that they're there. But even when we go in our big groups and we'll have 15 to 20 guys in an area, you'll go through some spots and only see a handful of deer. Yeah. And then other times you'll see 20 or 30 deer. Yeah. Well, and and I'll guarantee you that, like, I can come back and be like, you see anything? Nope. Well, right. I'll guarantee you there was deer all around me. I just didn't see them. Right. We, I mean, like, when you're in that woods, like, like if you're not looking at that spot, they're jumping over. Not, they're, you know what I right. mean? Right. Well, we had uh, two years ago, I think it was, Brad Lindsay it went the whole trip. Now, this is Brad who's killed a buck there almost every time he's crossed yeah. the, the border. <laughs> yeah. Because he only hunts there on the one big trip, and he's killed a buck almost every year. But the year he didn't, he never saw one deer. The whole three days. Really? Never saw a deer. And, like, that's one of the luckiest guys to, to, yeah. to have with you. But the rest of us, you know, we all saw deer and we killed a, you know, we had a normal trip. He just was the unluckiest guy on that trip, yeah, just, you know. It's the way it goes sometimes. Right. Right? So did Emma, did you end up killing one down there on a subsequent hunt? No. No? Never got one in PA? No. We had another close call, though, on the last day, right? You went twice? Right. Two trips down there? Yeah. Was that when it just, like, crossed? No, three trips. Oh, really? Yeah. No. Yeah, we went because we went for the October doe hunt. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then we went opening weekend, and then oh, we went the last week. You went the, le- the, the weekend last after we were all down yeah. there at a big game. I always go the Saturday after. You can't hunt that Sunday. So the Saturday after we leave is the last day of the season. Yep. So I always, me and Rob always come back. Yeah. And we and we brought Sam. I thought you said the Saturday. We No, there's one more Saturday after we leave. Oh, well, he got there's, a deer. Yeah. Who did Sam? Sam got one. Oh, nice. Oh, you didn't know that? No. Yeah. So he got... Buck or doe? We were walking to our spot, and, um, yeah, we were walking in, and then all of a sudden, he just stopped, and me and Rob just turned around, and then he was just shooting the deer, like, we didn't even know, like, and then after, he was like, yeah, I said your names, like, five times, but you guys just didn't turn around, so finally, we turned around, and his gun was just ready, so then he just shot it. So you guys were hiking in? Yep. Um, what did he I, get? 
a buck, a spike. It was like. It was barely, barely three barely inches. Barely it was. So, well, that's all right. So when, uh, the, and how, so, how old was he? he so he's, uh, he's what, junior, 14. Junior hunter. So, yeah. and so he does not have to go by the antler restriction. That's right. Yeah. Yep. The only that's thing, awesome, he, though, the though. only thing is, he didn't have a doe tag for that area, so he had to be careful. Because yeah. if it wasn't a three, inch, if it was like a two inch spike, it would have been an, actually an, considered an antlerless deer, right. which would have been a big no no. But yeah. he saw antlers, and so he killed the deer and yeah. put, hammered them right there, you know. So then we got to. Uh, I wasn't with them when it when it happened because I've it, shot them before when they're like two and fifteen, sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> it's a matter where you measure. That's a doe. <laughs> Yeah. So I ended up hunting up to them, and and we went and got the deer like right before dark. It was only about two and two three hundred yards from the truck, but we still quartered it because Rob, Rob and Sam both hadn't really been through that process. It's good to show them the process. Yeah, yeah it was cool because I, because uh, they were Rob's like the thing's so small we should just carry it right back to the truck. The truck's right there. I said, well, we can't be number one because we can't transport that deer over the right. line. Yeah, I got the. Did you get the card in the mail the, the other day? They. Uh, card from pa they're, they're now sending us a card reminding us of that oh yeah was it on the i got it yesterday oh no i didn't see that yet. and it's just a separate card to new york hunters that hunt pa saying you know we want to you know control cwd not to interrupt your story but they they're telling you in that and you can run us through it. you're probably more familiar than i am i just saw you say but i mean you can transport the meat back i think it has to be boned or no yeah it and does then, now it used to be just the spine and the brain that you couldn't bring back right. but now, now they, they want, want all the bone which is stupid because it's just the spine and the brain that carries the yeah. cur- the prions. As far as I know, that science hasn't changed, so yeah. there shouldn't be anything wrong with the leg bones. But right. now they want it totally deboned. But so Anyways. we owe, like e- like you said, either way, you can't bring that stuff back. So. No, you definitely can't bring a whole carcass no. back. No. So it. So anyways, uh, I I told Rob, I go, no, we got time. I'm like. I'll I'll help you guys, but w- you, you're going to sit here and go through this whole process because you're always telling me that you haven't done it yet. Yeah. So we laid the deer on its side, and, and Rob went and completely um, quartered the, the one side of the deer. And then we flipped it over, and Sam grabbed a knife, and he did the whole thing himself. Oh, nice. And he was – he Rob took his time, tried to do everything perfectly, and he got and – he, and he did. He did a good job. And then – Sam, you can tell that kid knows how to use a knife, like because he's oh, really? he's big on fishing. Him and Kurt, oh yeah, and all, I think all well, the Kurt boys. Kurt does a lot with those boys. He's yeah, they do a lot, but they're big on fishing, which I'm not. But that kid, I mean, he pulled out a knife and he's just like, whoa, 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 right <laughs> went right through it. I mean, he probably left a few more hairs behind than Rob did, but I mean, he just whipped right through that thing. Did no, really? no yeah. problem. Yeah, so it was a nice, easy pack out. He's not. Is he the the boy that went with us yeah. a couple years ago? You know, he's been with us both years. Sam. Both years, yeah, yeah. He's a nice kid. I like. Yeah. yeah. Of course, all his boys seem like they're nice. I've gotten he, to be friends with Kurt a little bit and yeah. friends on Facebook, and that. Yeah, they they're uh, quite the hunting family, which is great to see him and his boys out getting yeah. after it like that and fishing. Well, and it, Sam, he just loves doing this this big woods hunting with us because they where they live up in Orleans County, they're up in Kendall, and yeah, there's a lot of really good hunting and fishing up there, but everything's private. So it's like every bit of hunting access you get up there is a couple acres here, ten yeah. acres there. Like yeah. his dad's got it's like ten acres. Very flat, very thick. It's very flat and thick. So it's yeah. it's good deer habitat, but it's like it's it's a walk out, walk out the off the road right. and get in your tree stand and, and sit there. Yeah, and then go home. So it's it's nowhere near the experience that you're getting yeah, even the, that PA experiences or even like going to Naples or, you know, some of our state land hunts that we do. You know. So, anyways, uh, last year, in 2022, for the last day, I can't remember if Kurt and Sam went. I think, I almost think that they might have went. But anyways, last year on the Sunday morning when we were packing up from the main trip, I was, I just, you know, we were talking to Rob. I'm like, yeah, we're coming back next. Even though I had already filled my tag, I'm like, I'm coming back because I'm bringing her anyways. Yeah. So, uh. Sam's like, oh, I'm I'm going. If you guys will give me a ride, I'm going. You know, because Kurt's already said he had like to coach a basketball game or something oh, like that, okay. and it's a long ride from there. So, anyways, Rob called Kurt during the week and told him, hey, if you can bring him to my house Friday night, which is a drive for Kurt, it's probably an hour and a half. But he's like, if you can bring him out there, I'll take him and bring him home. So they did. Kurt took him out to 
spend the night at Rob's house Friday night, and nice. then we all drove down Saturday morning. So, um, you know, leaving Rob's house at, what, 4 in the morning, drive down there, hunt all day, kill a deer, come home, grab McDonald's on, in Wellsville on the way home. It's usually what we do on those day trips. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> then Kurt, or Rob still drove him all the way up to Kendall, and Rob must have got home around... Oh my God! That's Eleven, like twelve o'clock. Yeah. So I mean, it was it was a lot. Rob's but, out towards Buffalo ways. Isn't yeah, he's in West Seneca. Yeah, yeah. He's where Buffalo Bill used to live. Yeah, right, right near there. Yep. So, yeah, but the kid got a deer out of it. Yeah. So he was he was pumped. He was all pumping his fists and stuff. <laughs> Rob was all nervous because he didn't know if it was legal. He tried to tell me there was only one antler on it, and then we go up there. I'm like, Rob, there's two. He's like, Well, I didn't even really go up to it because I didn't know if it was legal. <laughs> like, what are you gonna so, do? Run away? Yeah, it was, not, <laughs> so you gotta deal I'm like, with the it. The thing's dead. I mean, what are you gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So did Emma? Did you end up? Can you connected last year? Didn't you? Did you get a deer last year? Did you get any deer last year? No. Yeah, I got two. Two? Did you get one early up here? Like when I say early, I mean like I got one early in Letchworth, in... and then. Oh okay. Oh, you got another one after Letchworth. Yeah. Yes, now I remember seeing that. But she got a big doe at the farm. Pretty accomplished. I only had like seven days and still managed to shoot two deers. So. Yeah, that's Meanwhile, my dad had a whole season and only shot one. So. <laughs> <laughs> so how was it taking your first deer last year? I mean, it was pretty small deer, but. Well, actually, so we got, we were like ready. And I guess, I didn't see this, but apparently a buck came by us. And I, I didn't know that. But what happened? With, like, we were walking in or whatever. Dad didn't have the gun set up good, so... Was uh, this at uh, Letchworth? Yeah. Are we talking to Letchworth here? Yeah. yeah. So... So, for anybody listening, we have, like, two different groups. So, while we we hunted there the same day, mm-hmm. but I'm on the other side of the river. Yeah. So, and you heard us over there. It was, like, a bunch of... It was... Yeah. We ran into a guy. He goes, there isn't this much shooting on opening day. <laughs> we, we come out of there with, like, I don't know, five, five does and two bucks, I think, that day. It was, it was a good day. But then you guys, we heard you shooting over there. Yeah, mostly at coyotes, but a yeah. few deer. <laughs> Funny, she's the only one that got a deer on our side. Me really? And, me yeah. and Brian were whacking at coyotes all day and couldn't get one. Uh, them fuckers are tough, especially with a muzzle muzzleloader. Man, do they move, too. I actually yeah. saw, you know, every time I'm down in there, I've seen coyotes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's obviously a lot of coyotes in there. They're but in they're moving. You try and get on with a muzzle loader, and they're just like, you know, they never quite stop. Yep. They're like scurrying along and then you're just about, they stop and you're just about to touch up and they start scurrying again. So, so all summer I had her shooting, um, dad, Brian and me all have TC encores. Yeah. And so, um, we all have different barrels that go on them too. Cause that's the cool thing with the encores. You can switch the you barrels. swap out the barrel and keep the chassis the same. Yeah. yeah the four end gets mm-hmm. swapped too. So dad's got a 223 and his wife, Emma shoots it. And so. I had her practicing with it in the summer to get the feel for that gun. For the gun, yeah. You know, the hammer is a big thing. and But with a two twenty three, it's a super light barrel. So yeah. And she was still, even that, she was shooting off a rest on a picnic table. So that's all I figured was get used to the hammer and the trigger and the scope and all that. And then I said, come muzzleloader season, I'm just going to put the, just give her the muzzleloader and say shoot. Because yeah. you don't want to be shooting same that gun, off different of barrel. Yeah. yeah, but you don't want to be practicing with a muzzle loader off the bench because then the recoil and the smoke and everything comes into play. There's no reason for that for her, right. you know. Is just pull the trigger, right? Well, we get all the way down to the river the first morning there, and I'm like, okay, we we had a decent setup on the ground, and I'm like, all right, we'll practice holding the gun up and everything. She's like, well, it's too heavy. Well, I never <laughs> considered that muzzle loader barrel. It's all that weight is out here. Yeah. It's like three of those. Uh, Three of those other barrels. So it's so heavy, right? Yeah, probably more. So I'm like, oh, that's no big deal. I'll just pull my bipod out of my backpack because we had we have one of those extendable bipods, mm-hmm. real tall ones, so you, yeah. she can sit there and still have the gun. Well, I go to put it on, and the freaking screw had fallen out, and it's gone, gone. Oh, so I tried to attach it with uh, some wire or something like that, yeah. or cable ties, and that didn't work. So it's like, well, you're gonna have to. Lean up against a tree, yeah, or just set it on it, a branch or something, or just use it like a shooting stick. Yeah. So, like for me, I can, I can just get in a you position. Pull, yeah. So, we saw two deer on the first hunt, 
in range, but they went the wrong way, never gave us a shot. So we go up to the, for the second hunt, and now I got this place scouted out because I killed a deer there the year before, but I was too far. I was one ravine off. They were in the next one, so I had to take a long shot at a doe. I got her, but I seen where all the deer kept popping up there, and I'm like, yeah. oh, next year. Yeah, make a note. Next yeah. year I'll be sitting on <laughs> I'm there. like, I put myself on the map in that spot, you know, because yeah. <laughs> I usually don't care what I'm doing, where I'm going, but there's occasionally there's a hunt where I'm like, that's my spot right there, <laughs> you know, and I'm the guy with the pencil on the map. So, that's I, right. you know, yeah. if I want a spot, I got it. You that's know? right. So yeah. I knew that she was going there. So it turns out. I got us into the right little ravine, but I should have been on the other side of it, as it turns out, because right away we get there, and I see a buck come. So the there's a main ravine that comes up, and then there's little side ones, and we're on one of those side ones. So you can see the side of the other ravine, but it's all hemlock trees, so it's dark in there. Yeah. So right away, we just sat down, and a buck pops up over, and he stops on the other side there. They always stop there to look, smell. And I'm like, Emma, there's a buck, there's a buck. You know, so we're trying to... She's got the gun, and now we're using that bipod like a shooting stick instead of a bipod because yeah, it won't yeah. connect. But it's not a real shooting stick because it doesn't pivot and all this shit. So now the buck comes down through, and she hasn't seen it yet. It crosses the creek and comes up this ravine, and it stops. It sees us moving because we're moving around like two idiots here trying to get set up for yeah. a shot because we're we're ready to shoot this way, but now the deer's on our left. Oh, so you got to get everything shifted. So we had there. to move everything over, and he's standing there 30 yards fucking looking at us like this, and I'm like... Shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. Well, she's nowhere near ready was to shoot decent? him. I didn't even know where it was. Oh, you didn't even see it yet, huh? You never did see the deer? No, until Oh, it after ran. he ran away. Okay. I saw it. 30 yards broadside, nothing in our way. Oh, my God. And it, it was a perfect first buck because it was just a yearling six-pointer, but it had a nice tall rack on it and everything. You want to put this on, Billy? All right. Yeah, you go ahead. I'm just going to get him plugged it, in. It would have just been the most perfect first deer ever, you know. So he runs off. Crap, we got to do a better job here. Well, <laughs> two minutes later. This is my story. No, one more. Two, two doe, another. Yeah, I know, a doe, it came. I saw it when it was down there, and then all of a sudden it just came up, and then you tried to stop it with your, like, yelling. It, it didn't stop it. It yep. just kept going. Yeah, those public land deer don't and it was stop a big the same one. way. It was a yeah, nice you one. Can't stop, like, it was a nice farm. doe, but I'm screaming at her, and she's just like, uh-uh, she's got... You know, they get all wide-eyed when they run by you when they're real scared. Yeah. Yeah. She had those big eyes like, uh-uh, I am not stopping for anything. And then Can you hear us, Bill Dan? Finally. We're getting Bill Dan hooked up here. Are you on? Say hi to everybody. Hi. All right. There you go. There's so you Bill can listen Dan. on that. It's a little more fun listening. Then anyways, finally we got set up and we just went... There was like this, what was it across from us? It was like this little path that they would yeah, all the go tr- down. Yeah, the trail came down the opposite hill. That's where we were set up to shoot. But the first two deer came down too fast. Um, so it was in the hemlock, so it was pretty dark over there. So she actually spotted the third deer. It was like one after another, you know. But that yeah. one that one stopped right across me. Like, it couldn't have been perfect. Like It was down and up the other side. Just, yeah. It just stopped. So um, I shot it, of course. And um, it actually, I thought it was going to run down, but it, it went the other way. I think it seen us and was turned around facing the other way like it was wanting to go back, oh, yeah. but it knew that Brad and Tard were up there because that's yeah. who chased them to begin with. Oh, so it kind of just stopped. Because they kicked it down. They kicked it down, and then it must have saw us and then wanted to, and then didn't know what to do. And, of course, it's a you know, it's a young deer, so what do yeah. they do? Yeah. They freeze. Right? Yeah, they're, they're like, standing there going, oh, <laughs> my brother used to get mad at me because I'd shoot those. <laughs> A bunch yeah. of deer would run away, and the one would yeah. stop and look and go, what's that? And I'd probably, yeah. he's like, really? Really? You got to shoot that thing? So the thing I always tell newer, newer, because I, I fought for this a long time back in the day, too. You know, when we, like, we used to do drives all the time. It's like, there'd be that one deer that would kind of let you take a shot at it. And so after a while, it's like, yeah, dummy, it's a six-month-old deer. That's why it let you do that, <laughs> yeah, right? that's why it doesn't know what's going on. It's like, is he shooting? It? Is I that would, bad? Right? I literally told myself that I wasn't going to shoot a small deer, but I still shot it because, like. And she saw it, too. She goes, Dad, there's a deer over there. It's not very big, but I'm going to shoot it anyways. Because we just had this debacle here and another one yeah. here. It was like, we're going to shoot something. Yeah, you, know? you, got, you got it. And it, I'm fine That's with what that. you're out there for. And I, to, I told her all along, I'm like, you shoot whatever you want. And yeah. if you decide to pass something, I'm fine with that, too. I don't care. You shoot whatever you want, you know. I couldn't pass. It was just right yeah. there. <laughs> it wasn't right there. I mean, it was a 50-yard shot, quartered away. But it just felt. It wasn't a hard shot. It was just like. It wasn't a difficult shot. Yeah. yeah. I didn't have to go around anything. But it was yeah. funny, too, because well, I finally though. finally got her, got the bipods up. She was sitting. Like, everything was finally set up correctly. And uh, I go, 
and, I, and I'm standing over her shoulder. I'm like hunched over, and I kind of whisper in her ear. I'm like, "Whenever you're ready, you can boom." <laughs> <laughs> but so you can right when you're about to, you can shoot now. <laughs> yeah. Oh so my God. I saw the thing hop and, and stumble up the so hill. So did you shot the muzzle loader prior to that? No. Right, so what'd you think? I mean, did it even register? Because you were probably excited. No, I mean, deer. definitely. I was warned about the kickback, but I didn't think it was going to be that bad. <laughs> that thing came back on me. So that that got your attention, huh? Yeah. Bill, Dan, did you ever shoot a muzzleloader yet? Have you shot one? No? You shot my pellet gun, right? No. Yeah, remember? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good shot, too. So that deer was a good hit? Oh, yeah. You know, I wasn't positive, but I it looked hit, and it ran. It did run up, and that's the thing. It was turned around that way, so it did end up running back into the drive. So I I reloaded the gun. She says, you didn't think you shot made a good shot, right? I didn't know where I shot it. I just. Did, did you feel like you hit I it? I couldn't remember. I knew it was hit, but yeah. I thought I hit it in, like, the leg or something. So I think she does what I do, like, with a gun when it's a quick sh- It's one thing, like, if you're sh- – if you have time to take a long broadside shot out in a field or something, you really focus on the shot. But when it's yeah. quick, in closer, it's happening quickly. I kind of black out. I mean, when the when the crosshairs get to the right spot, the gun goes off and yeah. the, the brain goes blank for a second. <laughs> I didn't want to wait. What with, with the other two deer, I was just like, well, this one's probably gonna run soon. Might as well shoot it now. Mm-hmm. So. It was wanting to run, but it didn't know where. So, anyways, well, you were you were learning. You knew it's like I gotta take it now if I'm gonna take it, right? So I reloaded the gun and said, well, we got, I mean, we had tags, to, you know, coming out our ears, you know, yeah. because now she's got her full license and it's this, you know, it's the end of the season. And I had all my tags still. I, I never did kill a deer in New York last year. So like we could. Oh, you didn't? No, PA was my only deer. Cause I, what did I tell you all year? Um, um. I said, I'm trophy hunting, right? Oh yeah. And I'm filling the freezer. Yeah. That's a good arrangement. That was my deal. Ever All put the meat up in yep. the freezer, and you can just hunt horn. That's right. So that's not, what that's what we're gonna do, Bill Dan. When you get older, I'm gonna take you out and you shoot all you want. You put the meat in the freezer. That's right. I'll just hunt the big bucks. All right. Is that a deal? Yeah, good deal. So we so we got set up, mm-hmm. and uh, but it wasn't five five more minutes, and Brad come over the radio and said he had found the deer. So it was kind of. I mean, it was. It was our, he didn't know who had shot, so he, he asked who shot, and I said, Emma, it would have been cool to go up there and blood trail it and actually yeah, never find get it. get through that whole thing. It, oh, well, I <laughs> thought that Tard was walking over. Oh, yeah, yeah, because he was walking over, and then you asked him. Well, yeah, because Tard walked over, and then Brad was behind, and then he found it, so. Brad told us over the radio that it was a headshot, and so then I was like, what? 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 Th- I was like, that was, she, no way she shot it. It wouldn't head. have gone there. No, it wouldn't yeah. have gone there, and I said, anyways, well, he just didn't go close to it, and it was just the blood coming out yeah. of the mouth and the yeah. nose, which, of course, you know, that's an engine room shot when they yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah, you right? hit him right in the wheelhouse when you get that's, that. That's yeah. lungs and, and heart. So, anyways, yeah, she hit it center mass, but quartering away and uphill. So when she hit it center, it went right oh, up through beautiful. the heart. It yeah. ruined the front left shoulder. Good shot. But, I mean, you couldn't have drawn up a better shot. Because yeah. even if you wanted to not take out that front shoulder, at the angle it was at, there was no way to make a good shot without doing that. Yeah. There's just no way, right, especially on a small deer like right, that. Right, right. Because if you shot too far back, you would have blown up the guts on the way through yeah, and everything. Yeah, a real mess. I oh. did not quarter cut up my own deer for one, though. I... I Anyone else can do that. I didn't do that. No, you didn't quarter I that did deal? have to carry it, though. Well, you guys have carried them out, obviously. You're in the same boat as we're in on the other side. You yeah. Carry them up out of there. It was a long ways out. So she took a, a front quarter, and I took a hind, and Good we, you. we you split everything else up. Yeah. I think I made her take a front and a, a back strap because I was I'd like. I had most room in my backpack. I, yeah. Because <laughs> all she carries is snacks, so. But uh, I went to hunt with her. Yeah. What do you got in there, Emma? <laughs> uh, last Break them out. Always pull them out. we got to be. You have to have a good snack. You do. How hunting works. So you the do. the coolest thing about that is, I mean, obviously it was <laughs> it was pretty obviously cool. My kid got her first deer, but the fact that when I when we recovered it, <clears throat> or it took a while, but eventually from the time that we recovered it to the time that we f- finished packing it all up, everybody in our entire group had come over. Oh, all the guys made it in? Every last one. And a lot of, and some of them were a long ways, and they had to go up, down, up, down to get over there, and they were calling on the radio, like, how, because you know how steep it gets over yeah. there. You you can't cross a lot Sometimes of those Sometimes you ravines. get cliffed out, and you yep. got to go all the way Big up time. and around and back down. 
big time. So everybody's like, where, where do we, how do we get over to you? We see you on the map, but we can't get there. Well, like I said, within a half hour of, of doing that, every last single person that was hunting ended was up that? meeting us over That's there. That's awesome. So it was like, I don't know what twelve of us or whatever now, it many, was. I was. I was just going to ask you how many guys are typically in your group there. So it was uh, well, me and her, and then like I said, Brad and Tard were the ones that probably kicked that deer to us. Trigger and Molly, Kurt and Sam were with us too. Um, was Rob going that? Rob was there. No, no, Rob wasn't there. Um, but I think John was there. Yeah. And, and uh, then, what was it, Uncle Brian's boss? What Uncle Brian's name? boss. Uh, yeah, and Brian was there. And yeah. There was more. Was J- was John and Mike there? I hunted with them later in the week, too. Yeah, they were there, and I think they, oh, one of the kids might have been with them. I don't know. <laughs> so you funny. had about a dozen guys. I would say there was about a dozen of it's us. It's interesting because yeah. we, you know, we, go, we had 16 on our side. Yeah. And with your dozen, I mean, right in that one area, we're pinching it off with like 30 oh, guys. Oh, AJ. AJ, AJ yeah. He's he always with be, us, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that's cool, though. Everybody came to celebrate the first yeah. year. Yeah. yeah, they all wanted to see it. Yeah. And, of course, she's just as cool as a cucumber, as yeah. always. She's, she's like, like oh, yeah, nothing. It was whatever, easy. guys. Well, it was small, so, like. Yeah, but there's, it doesn't matter. It's um, That's what, that's what like, our, in hunting, kind of, that's what we've created. You know, you got a new, younger hunter. They connect. You know, and it sounds like you were a little bit, like, felt a little bit bad it was small, Emma, you know. And uh, should never feel, you know, but, I mean, that's, like, kind of the culture today, right, is that we only want to shoot big deer. And, like you said, it doesn't matter. Shoot what you want, you know. Yeah. And, uh, but it is, it's, I mean, that's a huge accomplishment. I got, I'll tell you what, I got a buddy that hunts with us every opening day up at camp. And he is, uh, I think he just turned 65. Never killed a deer in his life. I'm sorry, what? So, never killed a deer in his life, ever. Now, he doesn't hunt. He probably doesn't hunt as hard as you do, you know. He, but, I mean, the point is, he does hunt for like a week every year. But, like, you take it for granted. Like, we kill deer, right? We yeah. go out. I mean, we, we get Obviously. deer, you know. Um, but a lot of people don't. So, you know, right. that, that's good for you. But a lot of, ki- a lot of um, killing deer is just the company you're with, you know. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. I mean... Um, if you're hunting by yourself and you're trying to figure it out and you don't have that experience, you know, some people do take to it naturally, Yeah. but most don't. And you could be a bad hunter and hunt with us and eventually you're going to run into some deer and you yeah. might not even get them, but at least, stumble out at least you're going to be into deer and you're going to have yeah. a chance like every second that you're yeah. out there hunting, you know? So, so a lot of people that go with us end up killing a lot of deer, yeah. you know, <laughs> when they go with our group. I was, uh. So, because you're, you're going to get opportunities, not every that's, time. That but. same guy, Wes, I got a stand that's called the Forgotten Stand that's back behind the cabin and up at camp, and that, that's where I killed that nine point last year with my bow. But, I mean, that's like a, a money spot. If you go there and sit there, I'll, like, you're going you're gonna to come into something. And this, I told him, I go, you shoot whatever you want. You know, I don't care if it's a spike yeah. or anything. You never kill the deer. You want right. to kill a deer, just shoot whatever you want. So, he, you know, he hunts it. I see him back at camp that night, and I'm like, how'd you make it? I didn't see a thing. Like, God, how could you? I mean, you can't tell me a deer didn't come through there, right? So I'm checking the ta- trail camera, like, after Thanksgiving. And the, I got a trail camera right in there, right? And, and I see this buck. He's like, he wasn't huge, you know. He was probably like an eight point, seven point. And he comes down through there at like 920 or something, 923 a.m. So I call Wes. I'm like, where were you at 923 a.m. on opening day? He's like, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> And and I I'm like, did you go to the outhouse or go back to cabin for something to eat? He's like, I, you know, I think I did. I think I had to go back and hit the outhouse. I'm like, oh, dude. <laughs> I go nine twenty three. A buck come right by there, you know. Mm-hmm. And he goes, I might have been there and just not seen it, you know. But it's just like, yeah. Hey, he's happy. He has fun. He goes out there. But it's it, I have to laugh because, you know, sometimes people just they're there. The deer are there. They just don't see him, you know. So then you got another one up at the farm. Well, that must have been that same that week, later on. that week. That one was a lot easier. That one was much more enjoyable. Just kidding. I like the one in Letchworth more. Just cause. Did you, what, what do you think of that terrain and that whole experience at Letchworth? Did you like that? Uh, like the whole gang there, and you know something's going to happen, right? Yeah. There's constantly like, there's constantly boomsticks going off down there. Yeah, and there's stuff, every stuff run. I mean, it's just an exciting 
day. That was like my favorite. Well, I don't know. Pennsylvania is awesome, but well, I guess Letch- that that Letchworth hunt that we do is like that's a highlight. Yeah. And I've been down there three years with you guys, and uh, ever since the holiday hunt, I couldn't hunt with you prior to that because of work. But yeah, um, I've, I've had a shot every year, and I brought two out. You know, and so it's it's a it's a fun hunt, and it's a great camaraderie. Even though you're not like you're close enough, but then when you get them, it's just like PA. Somebody will come to you to yeah. help you pack it out. You know. Right. And, yeah, we had like a there was a trail of guys with backpacks on. We loaded all the meat in the back of my truck, and it was just like back of my truck was full of game bags. Full of we had we had to label them so you know whose was whose when you got back. You know, we had a lot of deer. <clears throat> the holiday hunt is it's the best thing they've done, and uh, a lot of people like every regulation. I understand there's a a positive and a negative, a pro and a con to every yeah. Sure every there's. all of these regulations, like I say, no matter where you go, people are going to bitch and complain about every single thing, right? But, but I, and I understand a lot of them, but I will fight you to the death about the holiday hunt. I, I don't care. I mean, you're wrong if you don't like the holiday hunt. Yeah. Well, if the holiday hunt wasn't there, I wouldn't have been able to hunt because. Yes, exactly. Right, because of your age, so it was extra special for us last year because that was the only time she would have been able to hunt. But in the future. Because of when your birthday was? Because yeah, December yeah. 20th was her birthday. Oh, so cool. yeah. standard hunting season closed the day before her birthday. Yeah. So she would have missed had it to by wait a whole nother year. She would have missed it by one day. Now we got to hunt. But it's just in general, though, for kids and just for a lot of people like you. You know, you work for a school district yeah. your whole life. I couldn't get away. You, you barely ever took vacation, and that would have been your time to hunt. And you could have saved up more you would have worried less about your whole situation if you had right. just known that, okay, I got the holiday. I got seven days in my back pocket. I can back lean pocket. on that. You know? I can lean on that. And in the rest of the year, I'll get out when I can. Yeah, I'll hunt weekends, or maybe I'll take a Friday off here or there, but I'll lean on the, the holiday hunt. Kids kids in school, that pl- especially the ones that play sports, but even if you don't, by gun yeah. season, it gets dark at uh, 5 o'clock. You, know, you yeah. can't shoot past 5 o'clock. Well, you know, it's, it's pretty tough to get out there. College, you know, kids come home from college. It's college yeah. break at that yeah. time of year, right? Nobody's in school. When so. they were uh, contemplating that legislation, they had an open comment period, and I wrote quite a long letter to the DEC or, to, you know, to the whoever was determining that, and um, I wrote a letter, and those are all the points I hit. Yeah. Was there's, there's guys and gals that their employment doesn't allow them time off to hunt, but usually you can get away during the holidays. Some places even shut down. Uh, but like in my particular line of work in the school work, whether you're a teacher or, you know, bus driver, like I was in transportation, but it does allow you that opportunity. College kids, high school kids, family that comes home. My nephew comes home from Boston. Last year, my uh, nephew came. He's in the Navy, you know, and he scheduled his leave around the holidays. Yeah. So all, like everybody was back. It was a blast. Right. It was awesome. Yeah, because you can come home and know that you're going to see all sorts of family because everyone else is going to be around. Yeah. It, it is. I, just, I, I mean, kudos to state for putting that together. And look, I don't disagree with anybody who says there's that season's too long in New York, and they're, especially the gun season is so yeah. long. You know, I'd be okay with them closing the season for another week or just making it do like some of the Midwest states. What they do is they'll give you that first nine day of gun season, and then they'll make it archery season again. Yeah, and then they'll yeah. go into muzzleloader. So if they wanted to do something like that. I, that's fine. Yeah. I, I don't. I mean, we have what three full weekends, or maybe four, four there's, weekends now of gun. Yeah. Okay. There's. I know. I know this number, but I'm gonna have to figure it out again. So now that we open on a Saturday, that adds the weekend. We yeah. used to have three weekends, and now we have four. Yes, and it ends on a Sunday. So you got yeah. three full weeks. So it's 23 days of regular season, yeah. then nine days of muzzleloader. So yeah. that's that's 32. Yeah. And then you got seven more. So we have 39 days. If I did the math right, yeah, it's sixteen with plus twenty three some sort, with know. a firearm in New York State. So I, I, I don't disagree that that might be too many. If anybody wants to tell me this, well, if you want to make that argument, that's okay. Just don't take the holiday hunt away. Yeah. That's the one we need. Right. Well, and and you know what? There's there's a lot of people, a lot of people, probably the majority of hunters that don't hunt that whole time. Right. They don't. Yeah. And that's and that's okay for to get for those of us that do want to, or for like my nephews, and someday Billy will be off to college, and and you know he'll be able to come home over the holidays and hunt with us and stuff. So yeah, it's a great thing. 
And you typically get better hunting at that time, too, because you get the yeah. weather. You yeah. know, it starts to get colder and snowier. And they settle down a lot. Yeah. The deer settle down a lot in that right. time period. Um, so tell me about the, the the second deer. Okay, the second one, we were in a blind. What was that one? It was the one that Grandpa made. Yeah. So that one was like, I was, was looking permanent, over. Like a I hard was, blind? I was looking over the food plot, right? Yeah. So it would just be down. So... Was that behind the sweet corn there, on the, that side? Or? Yeah, the one yeah. you can see over there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. So we were there for a little bit, and nothing was there. I mean, there was some deer, like, further away, but they were, like, wasn't our property. But then they all started to, like, kind of flow in. What was How many were there? There was a lot, I feel like. We think there was eight below us and three above us. So Really? First, the first the afternoon hunt? Yeah. So And it was getting close to dark, and we yeah. hadn't seen a, anything. And those two fawns came in, and we're like, ah, shoot. We didn't even really want to shoot a doe that day, even though it was December 30th. It was close to the end, but we were going to go out to dinner. And uh, Oh, it was December 31st. Was I it? remember. It was you guys' anniversary. Okay. Oh, okay. So the two fawns came in. Well, they were the two fawns that had been hanging around there all fall because <clears throat> your son shot their mother. <laughs> they were looking for mom. <laughs> yeah, so they've been just hanging there, living ruthless. there. Ruthless. He is ruthless. Living their life down there. So I, right away I was like, oh, shit, it's those two fawns that are there all the time. You know, nice, healthy deer. You know, I'm, I'm kidding about your – he did shoot their mother, but yeah. I, I don't care. I, They're I'm, fine. I'm a person that says that there's absolutely no way that, that, that that's bad uh, for them. No, those deer are fine. If anything, they get to learn to live on their own a little bit sooner, yeah. but – Anyways, and uh, the does group up anyhow. They'll be hanging with a gang. Oh, yeah. They're done nursing. That's all that matters. All of a sudden then, right before, you know, the other good thing New York has done is they finally moved the the legal hunting hours to a half yeah, hour yeah. before and a half hour after, and that's another one that people don't understand. It's too dark. Well, then don't shoot if it's too dark. Right. It's still, it's your, per- like, I decide when, like, I don't care what the clock says unless it's, like, I'm Once, past that half right. hour. But I don't, I'll tell you, I don't shoot till the end of shooting legal shooting life because I'm older and I just don't see as well and I don't but the but but you but even for you though you know there's days where it's snowy and the full right. moon it's and, darker and, and there's other days that are lighter right if I'm hunting a field edge I can get another 20 minutes if, of hunting if in. it's cloudy and rainy even on a field mm-hmm. edge you can't shoot past sundown but if it's a clear night and especially if there's snow yeah. it's like you have to t- I have to watch the clock to make sure I go home that you stop at the right time yeah so uh, all of a sudden they started flowing in mm-hmm and then, so, I went to go get my gun, and somebody forgot to open all the windows. <laughs> so, they were all frosted, so he went to go open them, and all the deer, they were kind of just, like, they were just looking, oh, and it was like, it. uh-oh. So then, like, what do you got, double we got the sliders? windows open, and we, like, stuck the gun out, I think, and, like, a bunch of them, like, went up the hill. But these two just stayed for some reason, which are a little stupid, but I shot the big one, of course. But... Yeah, that one, that one, mm. yeah, it was one of the bigger ones from the group. I don't yeah. think it was the biggest, but. It might have been. It was a monster. Was it a good one? Oh, yeah. A big one. Yeah, I so saw out some. Everything else went, and then it just stayed, so I just shot that one. So you had the three deer from last year, because you had, uh, you shot the buck in PA, and then you got two in New York. Yeah. Very nice. So I shot that one. So then I got, actually got to look for that one. I like I like got to, to look track for that one. Them. So that one. Wow, your dad's showing me a picture of it right now. That was a big, that big solid doe. Where did I shoot this one? Wow. Through the heart. Yeah. Oh yeah, I shot it right yeah, through the beautiful heart. Beautiful shot. Of course. Yeah. You can shoot, Emma. I'm impressed. That's actually the exit. Is it? No. Nope. No, nope, it's not. It's right. That was the entrance because yep. then it spun around and went back. Wow. So. So you had. Uh, so I got to track that one. So that, that must not have gone far, looking at that shot. Mm, we kind of went in like a circle. Did it, it didn't go far back. It went like up into some like brush, but it wasn't that bad. So that one was really big. Um, I actually had to help drag that one out. <laughs> but of course I got it because I'm just so strong. So that one, that one we took back to the barn, and what did we do? We. Well, we just hung it there for the night. We tried to get a weight on it, but we don't have a good hanging yeah, system we there. Do that. So that didn't work we couldn't out figure out well. the weight. But 
I took that picture with Billy's tractor and in his international in the background there, but that thing was, yeah. And of course, that's a big deer. Of course, I, you know, again, I didn't do the best job there. I, it was, this one? it was the only, yeah, yeah, that's the picture you showed me. It was the only real cold day that we had in that late season that was like in the 20s. And sure enough, they were, because we got all that corn up by the road. Yeah. So they were coming through that food plot. There's brassicas down there, so they'll stop and eat there a little bit, but they're trying to move through and get up by the road by yeah. by dark to have the cover of dark to eat in that, in that corn. So typically there's three windows in this blind. It's a, it's a permanent blind, and they're, uh, there's two hinges, and so they hinge up, and then there's a latch. And uh, I opened the front one when we got there and then closed it because I like to keep it closed while we're in there. Brian likes to keep it open because he has to be able to hear. It drives him nuts if he can't hear. Yeah. Or me, I don't. I just want to watch. Yeah. So I like I'm, I'm the same way. Like I would, if, <laughs> like if you get in the blind, you have to understand it's going to impact your hearing. Yeah. Um. And I, what the most profound thing I've found about the blind, not to lead you off your story, but is is keeping the windows closed as much as you can really keeps the scent in. Yeah. I don't get winded <laughs> at all anymore in the blind. Yeah. So, and. It, to the hearing thing, too, another thing I do is I'm always, my ears and neck get cold, so I always wear a hood. Like, if yeah. you see me, like, even when I'm dressed light, I'll have that real thin hood over my yeah. ha- my ball cap. Yeah. And I know it affects my hearing. And first of all, I don't hear very well to begin with. Yeah. So I know it affects me, but I have, I, to me, it's more important to be comfortable than yeah. it is to be able to hear. You're, you're always giving up something. Right. right. But I'd rather be comfortable than be able to hear just a little <laughs> bit better, personally. That's That's my feeling on it, but... Anyways, when we got in the blind, I opened up the front window because that's where most of your shooting is, and I never bothered to open up the side ones. And that side one that we needed to shoot out of was frozen shut. And oh, I, was it? Yeah. We yeah. tried to shoot through the like the front one, but I was just gonna have to like sit like at an angle like that. It was too much of an that, angle. But it wasn't gonna work. So then we just had to go. To, we actually had to switch sides. Yeah, we had to switch. Yeah. Well, we blind. got in the blind. And we were sitting like that, and you were like, "No, let's switch." So we switched sides, but we had to switch sides again anyway. So. Yeah. No, that's awesome. And then, uh, well, as long as we're talking about Emma's uh, success. We'll go to my turkey. <laughs> we go right on to the turkey. She had a heck of a nice turkey hunt. Was okay. that your first time out yep. uh, this year? Yeah. yeah. Well, that one, first of all, I had to get up at 4 a.m. That was not fun. But we went to three different places, too. Yeah, we hunted the farm in the dark, and Uncle Trigger was up. This is youth season. So Trigger said, well, I'll go out in Sheldon and scout because he's got a bunch of places he can hunt up there. He goes, you hunt the farm and see what's going on, and I'll go scout Sheldon. Well, it worked out backwards because we heard a couple gobbles on the roost but nothing, never saw a turkey, and meanwhile he had turkeys lined up that he could have killed over there. But yeah. it was youth season, so he wasn't hunting. Yeah, he, was just, he didn't have a gun. He was just watching. So anyways, we went up there. It was actually very cold in the morning. It was probably low mid thirties. So oh, we actually nice, got nice cold morning. We huh? actually got kind of cold in the blind and hadn't heard anything in a while since the roost. So we were, went up to Sheldon, hunted there, didn't see anything. And I told Brian, I go, well, if you want to do one more hunt, I said, let's just go to the farm, get on the four wheelers, ride up towards the corner oh, of yeah. the property. And then we, what was it? A call? Uh, we did a call, and yeah. then we were like, okay, if we don't hear anything. Then we're going to go back. But we heard something, so we um, put up the blind really quickly. So and which part of the farm? Are you on the south side of the yeah, road? Yeah, south the, side. In that south piece? And then we put up a decoy. And the turkey went exactly as planned. It went up to the decoy. Didn't go exactly as planned, well, but eventually no. it Okay, so Uncle Ryan was by the tree, and the turkey, they came, like, around you, in a so circle. So you told Brian almost. to come in? There was two of them, right? Yeah. Yeah, there was two of them. There was a, a the, your gobbler and a Jake. Yeah. So Uncle Brian was sitting right there, and it kind of went, like, right by Uncle Brian. So we w- switched to that window. And then it was, like, it went to another window. And then I was going to shoot it there. But we just decided to wait. And then it's – then by that point, there was only one turkey, right, or two. So The one, fortunately I – th- I just assumed they were both long beards because I guess I only saw the one. But fortunately, the right one. So what happened was we knew we had to go fast because when they hear you – when they respond to your call right away, so it had gotten really windy too in the morning. So when we were up in Sheldon, I, we could tell our call wasn't carrying anywhere. Yeah. 
So we got, that's why I told him, I'm like, let's go up, get in the woods a little ways where the, where we'll be out of the wind. Yeah, I said, cut, they'll, the, cut they'll, the wind a little bit. They'll be able to hear our calls. So what we did the year before, he did the same thing, went up in there with his kids, made a call, turkey responded, he threw up the blind. Him and his two kids both got in and like immediately whacked that bird. Oh, so he got one with the kids yeah, the previous year? The previous year. So we went to that same spot and same thing. He made one, I think one call, nothing, made another call right away. It's like, okay. So he was calling, yeah, and you guys weren't calling. No, no, you're just watching over the decoy. Was he behind you? In the end, he ended up being to our right, okay, south of us a little bit. But what happens is there's two logging roads that come together, and we were at kind of the point where they come together in okay. the blind. He was over here, and the turkey, the decoy, I put out in front of us. So the plan was that he, for the that, turkey to come, like, yeah, but they stayed too far south and didn't see right. the decoy. So then they went past us. If you watch the video that I posted on f- on Facebook, you can see it's a, it's on a private page, but Bill could see it. But it, yeah. anyways, you see them two turkeys. They gobble like they're into it, and they go like thirty five yards out in front of Trigger, but way too far for us. And then of course he's between because he stayed outside, yeah. and now he's between us and the turkeys. <laughs> so, so that was, and then we had to switch. Wi- it's a three sixty blind. Oh my gosh, we had to switch windows like thirty times. We started in the front where the decoy was. Then we saw the turkeys, so we moved to the side. Then they got behind us, so we went to the back. We went to the as back. soon as we got set up there, they turned and started going back the other way. So we moved back to the side again. And like I had to stick, I had to take out the gun every single time, and then we had to set up the stick and then put the gun out. So it was not easy. Like. You had to be quick, but yeah, it was you gotta be so quiet. loud, you don't wanna, too, you know, yeah. especially with, like, the shooting stick that we had. We had that right. Yep. Yeah. Because it was a very big turkey. Then. So yeah. then it came right to the decoy, and I was just coming. I realized we never talked about where to shoot the turkey, so I was like, <laughs> where do I shoot it? So I don't really exactly – where did you say? So I messed up. You said the wrong spot. I said shoot it where the neck meets the chest, but it should have been where the neck meets the head. The head, yeah. Well, she shot it right where the neck meets the chest. <laughs> had a girl. <laughs> and fortunately. So then Uncle Brian, he came running up. I took the shot, and then he came running from behind, and he, like, stepped on it. It was actually funny. He came running, and then the turkey was just, like, it was just flapping. But then. Knocked it right down, huh? TSS, 20-gauge TSS rounds. At Three a, inch? Yeah, at then, 25 yards. Then nice. I carried my turkey out. I carried it, like. Is it heavy? Yeah. Last time my up. dad shot a turkey, I was so convinced. I was like, I'm going to carry it out. I couldn't pick it up. It was too heavy. This one, though, I was able to pick this one up. Well, so she you, actually, You're probably a little older. Well, so she actually figured oh out God. a better way to carry it. Oh, she's carrying her arms like a baby. Yeah. It's actually a great idea. That's a that's a good-sized turkey. Oh, yeah. It is a pain in the butt. You know, with the traditionally, you, yeah. time, you fling them over your back. Well, it's just, there's nothing but you got to have a lot of hand and arm strength to be able yeah. to do that. That's a good bird. Yeah, that was a big one. I mean, did you she, eat it yet, Emma? Did you guys eat it? Yes, it was so good. How'd you cook it? I don't know. <laughs> My dad cooked it. How'd you cook it? Um, so I'm not a a big fan of taking all day to cook a turkey breast. Yeah, you know, like uh, Dad and Brian have like they'll they will uh they'll make like a brine yeah for it, and then they'll slow cook it either on the grill or the oven, and it still dries it out. Yeah, no matter what you do, it's gonna be. So a it's still bad. dry. So what I what I ended up doing is, um, I cooked it the same as I did as I would um, a lot of my venison. Is I'll cook up all the veggies in the frying pan, yeah. the Italian dressing, and then at the same time I'll chunk up the turkey, like right cube in. size, yeah. bite size. But uh, I don't like to throw the raw turkey in there like I would the venison. So I marinated Probably it won't. and then I browned it in a pot and then I just dumped it in with the veggies and stirred it in like I always do. It was good, and that's that's the best way. By veggies? Are we talking onions and peppers? Yeah, I'm I'm uh I'm huge on onions and mushrooms in a frying oh, pan nice. with oh, uh, with Italian dressing. I mean, I just think that's that's the ticket. Don't get what else better, do we right? put in there? Well, you we don't like onions or mushrooms, so I thought we had like there might have been peppers in there too. I didn't eat those. I don't like onions, peppers. <laughs> Well, you must have just had something else but that's, for a side. That's good, though. I you just I chunk it up and brown yeah. it and I'm marinate sure it. I'm pretty I mixed it in with rice or something. Yeah, we've had it like that. The nice thing, too, is when you chunk it small, you get into that, um, the stringy stuff. Because yeah. within the breast, there's all those There's um, different uh, areas muscles. of sinew and muscle yeah. groups and everything. And so that's, it's more profound than it is on a domestic bird. Yeah. it's And it's real hard. It's yeah. nasty stuff to chew through. But when you chunk it small, you are, you're able to get more of those out with the knife. Mm-hmm. And trim better. 
Yeah. And then we haven't cooked the legs yet, but what we'll do is we'll put them in a slow cooker. Yeah, we do. That meat will fall off. Yeah, yeah, we do crock pot, and me and her like dark meat, like on our turkey and chicken, anyways. Yeah. And we're the only ones in the family that like that. Oh, that's a good thing. So good. Yeah, so I have to fight for it. And I think actually what we're going to do this time is uh, make tacos out of it. Mm, oh, that'd be nice. That's good. Yeah, we'll slow cook it, and then and most people don't even cook their their chi- their turkey legs, which I you know I think is kind of a shame because they got all <coughs> those sharp little bones in there. Yeah, but when you slow cook it and you peel it off, that's what you got to do is peel it. Yeah, you just take a fork and you yeah. can slide it right off of there and throw everything yeah. out. I so mean, it is a shame though, and I know we started out that way where yeah. you know we would just breast them out and pitch. Well, I started out cooking the whole bird, right. but you don't want to throw that bird in the oven because no. that meat on the legs, you might as well throw it away. You waste. But well, you want deep fry them if you're going to do the whole bird. Yeah, yeah. Which I've I had mean, it that way, but it's so much work for so little meat because yeah. the meat really is just the breast and the legs. Yeah, you know. So there's no need. So to then go we got the where whole. we were just breasting them and throwing them, throwing them out. But now we breast them, take the legs and the thighs. Yeah, and, I think that's the way to go. You know what I mean? There's a lot you, of meat there. Yeah, and you can throw it in a, a slow cooker, like you're saying, and, you, and then you let that cook down, and you take a fork and slide it right off, and you can yeah. make whatever out of it. Tacos is great, you know. Uh, yeah. Me and her, we really like the dark meat better than than the white mm-hmm. because it's got that little bit of a little bit more grease to it. Yeah, you know, yeah. a little more flavor. Yeah, so a little more moist. Well, good for you. You had a good uh, first season. What get out now? You're um, we didn't cover this in the beginning. We kind of a little intro, but you're now. Did you say you're going into seventh or eighth? Seventh. Seventh grade. So you're middle school. You're in sports. Does that interfere with the hunting a little bit? A little, but it's okay because I don't like to bow hunt anyways. So you're not into archery it, at all. Well, yeah, I like like I like when you go to the crossbow because mm-hmm. well, I don't like it because the deer have to be so close, and then yeah. sometimes there's deer and they just don't come in the range, so you don't get a chance. Right. I personally don't like it. I'll go with yeah. my dad, but I don't like to. Yeah. I've never really done it because I never got the chance, but I don't think I'll like it. I'll do crossbow maybe, but. Yeah, and you you never it's know. It's gonna be hard you know? too to like. In time, you might uh, you might yeah. develop uh, you know a a desire to go out and do that with a bow. And half the fun of me with archery is uh, you know practicing ahead of season. It's just I enjoy shooting the bow and then um, sitting there knowing that there's a high likelihood you're not going to get a shot here. So yeah, but you know, and if if you do, I mean, the pressure's on. It's just it's. It's not for everybody. I I love it. But I like shooting the muzzle. I have a crossbow and I don't even use it. Yeah. I figure, well, that's for when I can no longer pull my compound, you know. Yeah. So she's a little more results based. That which is which okay. Which is fine, yeah. You know. She's a busy person too, so Yeah, you gotta make it count. I mean, you don't have many days in and you got a turkey and two deer, so she's about I mean, efficiency. When I was a kid, I you know, I lived on a farm and I was big into sports too and even though I didn't play a fall sport, I even just watching sports, whatever. Mm-hmm. That that was my life, you know, and I liked to hunt. But I just hunted when I could and then then when I, you know, got out of that sort of stuff and it was just work and, you know, work, play and hunt, you know, so yeah. that that became That's when what I my got brothers to be like, did. They, my my brother was all about sports and, and my son Billy was that way. Yeah, he Billy, said the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, he was like Jimmy was with me. Jimmy quit sports, scholastic sports, because it interfered with his hunting. Yeah. And he said, you know, I'm, this messes with my archery season if I play yeah. football, so I ain't playing football. Um Billy was the other way around, you know, he so he kinda drifted a little bit away, but once he got out of college, he came back hard, obviously, and, and he's done, you know, He's very good. He's still, like Jimmy would tell you, he's still not as good as him, but he's still catching up. But Billy's done well, I gotta, and he's he's a good hunter. Yeah, no, I, I mean, i got to actually say, I know I know Jimmy gets – Jimmy kills a lot of stuff, and I, I don't hunt with him, but I know – I know damn – I've always known that Jimmy was a good hunter. But Billy, from where he started when I met him to yeah. what he's doing now, I would it's say – Unbelievable. Especially after last year where he ran into a big buck every time he hunted, even when he didn't have yeah. a tag – I mean, he's quickly becoming one of the best hunters I know. Yeah. I And it that's all happened in the last 10 or 12 years yeah, or whatever. Yeah, it has, really. You know, yeah. he's, I mean, he, he's, we, we made fun of him when we first started hunting with him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we still do, but, uh, yeah, in, in all seriousness, he's he's turned into a hell of a hunter. Very yeah. good. And uh, he ain't afraid of the hard work either. Like that, like opening day, you know, I, I, want, I don't want to leave camp because it's like the camaraderie and all the guys are there right. and I'm kind of the host because I own the place right but 
he takes off. He leaves an hour, hour and a half for anybody else, and he's gone. And he <laughs> goes and climbs up that mountain, and you know, on on public land. Yeah. But then, you know, five after seven or ten after seven, whatever it is, he's sending me a picture of this gorgeous buck on the ground. He's like, got him. I'm like, oh, my God. It's funny. He's done, he's done that every year on opening day except for the time that I went with him. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't yeah. see shit that day. Yeah. We, he Did you go up there? Yeah, the uh, two years ago. When you came to our place for opening day. Yeah, because it was snowed in here. Oh, Did my you? gosh. Yeah, Did you go up horrible. and hunt with him on the state land? Yeah. Okay. But he went up on the north end where he always does, and I went on the south end where I had hunted the year before. Yeah. And I climbed way up there, and, uh, boy, that is – where he goes up, there's at least a road to follow a lot yeah. of the ways. Yeah. Where I went up, holy shnikes, is yeah. that bad? I mean – So you went away south. You went up that steep part. Way on the south end, because yeah. in the middle is all private land. Right, right. So you so either that have That south to, end is holy macro. That's Yeah, it is brutal there. Yeah. Way steeper than Pennsylvania and taller. What? It's yeah. like 1,500 feet elevation climb yeah, I th- there. I think. And, we're from not, and the road isn't even at the total bottom. The no. lake is still below the road. Yeah, I think from where you park, I think it's 1,100 feet of elevation gain there. That sounds where right. Where we hunt. And it's because yeah. uh, I've parked there and uh, I went by myself, like on Veterans Day a couple of times when I was working. I'd be off on Veterans Day. So I went by myself on a hunt. And my father used to take me up there when I was a kid because he, he knew the guy that owned it. And uh, before, obviously, this is before it was public. And uh, so I'd like to go back there just kind of in memory of Dad and climb the mountain again. And, uh, oh, my God, I parked there, and I went, I went right straight. I go right straight up. And you, I never saw a deer until, and it, like that's the way Hill Country is, where, like right on the crest, you know, yep. where you, that's, I started getting into them. And, uh, but it was beautiful up there. I went, I think I, that day, I think it was, I was going to say seven miles, but I think it was only five or six miles. Uh, Billy and I went up in there snowshoeing. It ain't the miles in that property. It's the elevation. Yeah. So if you do like five miles plus that yeah. elevation up and the down beats me up as bad. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. I almost died my, two my years knees. Oh, my God. In fact, last year, oh, whatever. I think we hunted there in 2020 with Jonesy when he killed those three deer. Yeah. So I had to, I brought one, the third one down by myself, the one I had to because your muzzle loader was jammed up, so I gave him my gun, and I went to recover the first one. Second, Jeff shot the one in the morning, sliced right. his finger open, trying to open your gun. Yeah. Then we hunted all day, didn't see shit, but we ended up getting on to deer right at the end, me and Jeff, and he shot that doe with your gun. We had gotten it fixed, reloaded, shot it. It took off running up back up the hill, and I shot it, and it dropped, and I thought it was weird that it dropped the way it did Well. My bullet had deflected through some beach and ended up hitting the, the thing in the neck, in the spine. Oh, did it? Dropped it there. Well, so I reloaded my gun, and he's like, my gun won't open again. So I gave him mine, and he shoots at another deer, the buck. Yeah. It was so, a decent buck. It was yeah. eight point or something. It was his first. Yep. Well, well, I guess he got a buck with the bow. Well, it was the first, it was first gun year buck. Yeah, yeah, first year. Yeah. So now, so, so now he's got a, a deer down here and a deer shot over here. So I reloaded the gun. It was my last bullet. I gave it to him. I said, Tear, take this with me. That it's the last load, so make it count. So I think Adam ended up finishing the deer. Well, Jeff goes down this way. So I go up the other way and get to this doe, and the freaking thing's still alive. So I had to pull out my knife and kill oh, it. <laughs> oh, gee. <laughs> Which in muzzleloader season, I've done that a few times. I carry like a, I carry a long fillet knife in my pocket, yeah. and it's good for deboning, but it's also good for... Yeah, yeah. So I then I dragged that one down myself, and I, I didn't quarter it because I was by myself, and I'm like, oh, it's downhill. It'll be all right. Well, oh my God. I got cliffed out, so I had to go in the creek, which the creek looked pretty mild at that point, but then I started running into waterfalls, and so I was dragging this doe down waterfalls. Yeah, it gets where it drops down. Oh, it was bad. So then the next year, anyways, well, I guess it was two years later when me and Billy went back, and he shot that doe, and then we went down that way, and he ended up falling down there too. And he was like, holy crap, it's that's, wicked, you know, Steve. for even Billy to say, I mean, he's a he's a mountain goat. He's a yeah. billy goat, right? Yeah. So, and for him to even have a hard time coming down there, it's like, man. And it, there was a fresh coat of snow on the ground, too. So nice. it was, everything was slick. Makes it hard. Yeah. Crazy. Well, uh, how was your summer? I know you've been you've been off uh, off work now. So when, when did all that start and you had to? You were real bad. Like you wouldn't have been sitting here talking to me here. No, the month a of May. Months ago. The month of May, I was. Completely it was right after the turkey hunt, right? 
Yeah. Yeah, I said it. I was like, man, I'm glad we went turkey hunting because, geez. Yeah, that was I'm glad I got my turkey. After that, Dad was laid up, so it's yeah. it's been a while. Yeah, it was April you. 20th when she shot the turkey, and then it was like eight days later where I got laid up and with my neck and shoulder, and I'm still recovering. I still haven't yeah. gone back to work, so, I mean, I'm back to doing most normal things. We're going camping for the first time this year yeah. today. Where are you so, headed? Uh, Sun Valley in Arkport. Oh, okay, nice. i never been there before, so I don't even know, but yeah. apparently it was recommended, so we're going. Oh, good for you. So I'm back to doing most normal things, but I don't have feeling in two of the fingers in my left hand, so I can't do everything I need to do, and I still have pain in the neck. So, um, Shoulder? Was it shoulder, too? Neck, yeah. Shoulder. Neck, shoulder, spine. Hand. Hand. So, so I will not be shooting a, a bow this year. I actually got my doctor signed the reasonable, um, whatever they call it, the yeah, you can get crossbow. doctor's authorization for crossbow use for yeah, yeah, good for you. Yeah, I mean, it's a good thing that they have that now because, and I mean, I, at this point, I don't even know if I'll be going in a tree stand other than a blind, yeah. you know. But I figure my crossbow is only good to thirty yards anyway, so it'll pretty yeah. much be like bow hunting. And, yeah, you know, it's gonna allow me to hopefully Crossbows get out are better. there. <laughs> They're more fun. Well, they are definitely more efficient at killing things. I guess. I mean, not for everyone. There's, there's a lot of guys like Trigger, and I think Billy's this way now too. Where, um, they're so they're good enough, efficient enough with a bow. Where I, I don't think they would even choose to carry one if they could, because I think Jimmy said it. He's right. It's, it's very inconvenient carrying a crossbow around. It's a pain in the ass. It's the most like I we like to go when we hunt. Yeah, and I, I'll, you know, I can. You got an arrow in your quiver, and you the bow is easy to carry. I got one, and I'm like, oh, this is cool. I'll get a crossbow. I got it years ago. And we'd go on state land hunts, and we're out there going. And it's like, how do you carry this? this There's thing no is like, good way. Like, if I'm sitting in a blind, I think the crossbow would be the cat's meow, you yeah. know? Um, but, my God, when you're, like, if you're out for a day and you're going three, four, five miles hiking, still hunting, it's just awkward. Even yeah. just to get up in a... In a tree, in a regular tree yeah, stand, is yeah. a pain in the ass. So, yeah, and I I sat in tree stands. I I took it out this one year, and and I sat in some of my stands, and I hold it up like like I always kind of dry run, like I know the deer sure. usually come, to, and and I'm like, well, I can't get that shot because my limo hit the trunk of the tree the way I sit right here. I had all these spots that I had like different considerations that you know typically with a vertical bow you're like worried about you know make sure you're clear on right. top bottom whatever. So I. Honestly, I haven't had it out in a couple of years, and I don't. I have nothing against crossbows. Very fun to shoot. I liked it. Um, I just found it cumbersome. Yeah. And now that I have some box blinds, um, I think I might use it. I might take it out. But that, I'm not a guy that would uh, like my personal limits thirty yards with my with my bow. Mm-hmm. And I think it'd be the same with the crossbow. I mean, it's a, like yeah. Well, the bow, you know, you got a scope and it's accurate to fifty. But a lot can happen in fifty yards. With well, the a white problem tail is they're gonna the they're gonna hear that arrow coming just like they're they, loud. You yeah. know, they're loud with the, at the shot. Now at twenty yards, they don't react. It just crushes yeah. them. But um, I've tried a forty yard shot and had them drop just like they do. Sure, uh, you yeah. know. Fortunately, on that one, I hit a branch and it deflected. So I don't think I would have. You know, it was probably a good yeah. thing that I missed the deer clean. But um, yeah, it just just. People are so vehemently against the crossbow, and the, the the main argument is, there's two main arguments, I guess. One is the fact that people can go out without having to do much practice, and I understand that. It takes a lot of the art out of the, out of the bow, right? Because any guy can just go to the sporting goods store, and buy yeah, one, have it set up in a, a couple hours, going. and you're ready to go. But it's also a good thing, though, because it allows a lot of people to get into archery hunting. That's kind of my take on it. You know, like if we're about you know recruitment and retention, right? There's people that might otherwise not get into that archery hunting and never experience that. And I, I like I, I'd be fine if people are allowed to carry the crossbow the whole archery season. I don't really care. Well, look in Pennsylvania, Ohio, and I think West Virginia, Wisconsin, I think Michigan. Now, there's a ton of them that just let that just qual- classify it as a bow, in they all say that the that it hasn't hurt anything, you know. Yeah. 
the DNRs of those states say that it hasn't heard anything, which, of course, everyone doesn't believe them because, you know, there's always some kind of conspiracy about the <laughs> DNR wanting to kill all the deer. Yeah. The agency that manages the deer wants to kill all the deer, of course. That's yeah. the main then thing. put themselves deer out hunters, of work, Yeah, right? sure. It's could the, could the insurance company is paying them to, yeah. you know, that's the... And the other argument with the crossbow is that uh, everybody's going to be shooting 100 yards. Well, there are some that are capable of shooting that far, but like I said... The only way you could shoot an arrow 100 yards at a deer is you have to be in a blind, on a rest, in a field, with no obstructions. Yeah. And you have to have that deer standing broadside and totally unaware that anything is going on. Yeah. To even try a shot like that. And probably after And even you tr- then. And, you, and if you try it, you're probably going to fail and then yeah. say, well, that was a bad idea. Now, now the other, you know... And then another one is, well, crossbow hunters are hacks. They're they're uh, shooting at everything, wounding deer and stuff. Let me tell you something. I've wounded and lost enough deer with a vertical bow, and everybody I know has too. Yeah. And a lot of the best that's hunters p- I know. That's part of the game, man. Right. So how could a crossbow make that worse? Right. It can't. There's no way. It might even make it better from an efficacy standpoint. It's way better. Yeah. Not saying that, you know. I get a lot of the arguments from the other side, but the unethical thing is just not. Yeah. You know what? It's another implement. Like my brother hunts with a muzzleloader all the time. Like for all firearm season, that's all you use a muzzleloader. Well, that's fine, you know. Some people, right. and he might say, well, it's a disadvantage that you're using a thirty out 6 with a scope or, a, you know, a 300 wind mag or what. You know what I mean? But it's like carry what you want. Right. Um, that's what he likes to use. And if, if somebody likes to bow hunt and they want to use a crossbow, and I think it's great that they've at least made the exception. So if somebody has some sort of physical ailment that prevents them from using their vertical bow, that they can still go out and take part, you know. And so that that's awesome. And I'm glad you went and got it. In the business that I work in, the, the D.C. hasn't actually approved it yet. I haven't sent it in, but the doctor did sign it. But They will. But I work in an industrial setting, you know, either maintenance or machine builders or, or uh, production type settings. Almost every guy I know that's 55 or older can't barely draw a bow, yeah, if at all. shoulders don't work. If at all. all. Yeah. And what happens then is that they're still good enough where they can do it, but they don't practice because it, it's too hard for them. Because it hurts. So they slack all summer long. Then they go out and shoot a few arrows and then go hunting. Well, who's unethical now? Right. Who's going to be ineffective now? It's that guy that can't go out there and shoot a dozen arrows three times a week. Right. Or every day. For the whole year. Yeah. yeah. Or even before he goes hunting, he, you or know, a month, he doesn't. Two months. He he can't shoot those couple arrows on his way out to make sure that everything's good to go because he just can't physically do it. Right now he's in a tree stand and trying to kill a, a deer when it comes by without right. having really practiced. That's the biggest segment right. of people that's going to rather hand the guy a crossbow, benefit. right? I yeah. think so. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So how's the farm looking at wrapping it up here? We're coming up, you know, we're pre seed. We got to it's uh. Let's say 23rd of August. I can't believe we're knocking on the door of September 1. Yeah. Kids will be back to school. We got, I don't know if you guys have it out here at, at our camp. We have a early doe only season. I think it's the 14th to the 22nd. Yeah, we um, don't have that here. Yeah, and I, they don't have it in 8H. I don't know why we have it in 8N, but I, I think there's, maybe, maybe, there's probably a lot of reasons that play into it, whatever they are. But at any rate, we have one, and we've always, my brother and I have always been, nobody's shooting does here during this too early, yada, yada. I, you know what? I think I'm going to do I told them we were splitting wood this weekend. I'm like, hey, just so you know, I think I'm going to shoot a doe during that early season. He's like, what are you, crazy? I'm like, I only want to shoot one doe. And if I shoot my doe during that early season, I can't shoot anything else. Right. I pack that up, put it in the freezer. Now my doe is done. Right. And I'm just buck hunting. Yeah. And last year, I, I had does come by. I'm bow hunting. And I wouldn't shoot because I'm waiting on the buck. You know what I mean? And yeah. then it ended up I never killed it. We right. never killed any does up there last year. And this is my argument with against the people who don't like the long gun seasons and, and the holiday hunt was well, you're going to shoot this probably the same amount of deer. I know it gives you more days, so there's people that shoot a deer that tried to get one before and didn't maybe, but they're still, they were given those doe tags, yeah. right? They had the tags for it. They were allotted. So D.C. wants to put a, kill a certain amount of antlerless deer right. in every unit every year. And all that's doing is helping them achieve their goals. Right. So 
what's the difference if I shoot one on September 23rd or January 1st? Yeah. It's a doe in my freezer with a, that and I had a tag the, for. Checks the box. And I, I don't have to worry about messing up my buck hunt because I can't shoot anything but a doe, right? So I told my brother, I go, unless it's like 90 out, I just can't get into hunting if it's too hot. But if, if it's a day like today... I told him I'm gonna go sit in the box blind on a food plot. Yeah, and I don't know what implement I will use. I'll decide as it gets closer. But it's almost, honest to God, it's almost a gimme. Yeah, you right. know, you just like. So yeah. I will go up there. I will take a nice dough. I will immediately. I got a walk-in cooler. I built at my house, so I can put it right in a cooler, chill her down. Me and my brother. I even got to bring the whole crew together. I'll get my brother-in-law right. him and I'll do it. Yeah, and I think he's gonna shoot one too. And I think that is the best time to to shoot one, as long as you have a way of getting to it and getting it processed. But you always could take it to a processor too. But yeah. um, I think that is the best time because you're right. All you're doing is focused on getting an antlerless deer, yeah. and just get one and get it over. Not with. over, Billy. He's looking sad. He's left the podcast, and now he's looking sad because Grandpa's tired. You want to come over and sit with me? Oh, you you want me to turn him back on? Oh, they broke? Oh, that's all right. It'll be okay. Oh, they always, that's supposed to come off in case you don't want it. Um, so that's, like, to catch you up with, with me a little bit, and you probably maybe heard of it, but I mean, all summer long, I got a sawmill, and I've, been, I've caught, like, thousands of board feet of lumber, <clears throat> wood that I had to take down to build the barn mm-hmm. that I want to use on the inside of the barn. But then, you know, buddies would be like, hey, I hear you got a sawmill. Could you cut this log? So I also cut some oak. I cut a maple for myself for a workbench. Cut some um, uh, butternut for my neighbor. But anyways, I got all this wood cut. I finally finished that last week, got the sawmill cleaned up because I borrowed it from a buddy, took that back to him. Um, so my cabin still isn't put back together because I had that all ripped apart. I started in the winter for mm. renovations and repairs. From some carpenter ant damage. You had damage. a beam you were going to replace. Right? So I replaced the beam. I got it all put back together. I put new windows in it. But, I mean, the, you go in the bunk room, and it's nothing but studs and exterior walls. I mean, it's like I've got some work to it's gonna do. It's going to get cold in there. Yeah. So, uh, and I will get it together. I got the insulation there and everything, and I've got the wood. Paula helped me, and she varnished all that wood. So I'm ready to put, uh, like, tongue and groove up instead of drywall. I just thought it would be nice. You know, it's a hunting camp. I already got a new ceiling in it, new lights in the ceiling. Um, But... Food plots have gotten, I did um, overseed, roller crimped, and then I mowed once after that. And uh, I think I'm just pulling the plug on the food plots. I got so much other stuff I got to do. Um, I'm just not going to do anymore. And, and the deer are just crushing them right now. And I'm just going to let it go. I mean, I, uh, it's like you can only do so much, and I'm up there by myself most of the time. And so um, I got a little bit of mowing to do, but other than that, my food plots are done. But Billy tells me you did a heck of a job with your food plots, and yeah, and uh, you really got the equipment going on. When I, I was up there getting a roller crimper last week, and I saw the drill, the no-till drill you have, and you have a no-till corn planter. And, of course, you know, we have the, the roller crimper. Like, you know, we all got that together. Um, you don't till at all, do you? Don't even have a way. The only... I tilled to put in a, a row of miscanthus grass this year, and that's the first time I've really ever tilled on the farm. But I had Dustin, our neighbor, come down and do that. So I, I do have a way if I needed to. But yeah. um, I was just laughing because when he the first pass through, the, I wanted him to get like four inches deep for because you got to bury those rhizomes oh, at least okay. a couple inches deep. So the first time he went down through the field, he's he's digging stuff up, and you could smell that dirt and stuff. And I'm like, you know. I understand why this is pleasing to a lot of people between the smell and the the just sight seeing of that, that beautiful soil. Yeah, hours. it's just like it's addicting to people. They for I swear to God, Emma, people they, food pl- digging up so dirt, boring. digging up dirt just gives people a feeling of satisfaction <laughs> and that can't be explained. Yeah. What? So then he comes down through. He ends up making like four passes. He's there's so many rocks in our damn field. He stalled his tractor like 12 times because okay. there's no shear pin or anything on that tiller. It just stalls the tractor. No slip clutch or anything? No. So then I'm laughing. I'm like, wow, this is what it would be like if we actually had to till our food plots. You know? Yeah. Granted, we'd use a disc or something that wouldn't, you know, nothing um, nothing PTO driven. You'd yeah. never be able to on our, our property because it's, it's clay and rocks. Yeah, it's just bony. But then all summer it's been wet. 
So anytime I've I've had to walk through that, you know, where I'm uh, the area that he tilled. Yeah, yeah. I'll walk from the no-till spot. Well, I could get two inches of rain in the no-till field. My I don't even get mud on my boots. And I step in that spot, and I will sink in three, four inches, and yeah. almost get stuck in it with my boots. Yeah. That's how sloppy it becomes when you when you do that to your ground. I'll tell you, I'm absolutely sold on no till, and and I think that sometimes we knock ourselves out like too hard trying to end up with a food plot that's pristine with no weeds. With like you could do nothing to that plot and let it turn into an overgrown field, and they'll be out there. They're yeah. they're going to find forbs and things to eat on. Right, you know. The problem is it just won't count as much in the hunting season. Correct. You know. Correct. And uh, so, you know, I don't have a good winter food for them. On our property, I've tried numerous times plant anything after August 15th or 20th. I don't get enough growing days, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, and and the deer, like you get, I get brassicas starting to pop up and, and they mow it right down to the dirt. Yeah. So, I mean, I really need to, if I'm going to do a brassica type thing, I really need to do it in July. So we'll see what next year brings. Um, but I have a, oh, the good news is we got a tremendous mass crop, hickory nuts, acorns. I'm seeing the mast falling really well, which we haven't had in a while. We had that woolly caterpillar thing. Mm-hmm. And so we haven't had acorns in several years and I'm telling you it's raining acorns down there. Mm-hmm. So that's exciting. Yeah. And you know? you're able to actually hunt those. Yeah. Things. Yeah. The, and, uh, so it's, I'm like, well, between the feet, the feet I have there and then by the fall, they're turning to mast anyway, if mm-hmm. it's there. Right. And yeah. It'll hold them, you know, and I've, and I've got the, you know, we've with the clearing and thinning we've done and the and the bedding that yeah, we've yeah, you created. guys have a lot of brows too. Yeah, there's a tremendous amount yeah. of brows. Woody, woody brows, so that's and that's a difference between Forbes and woody brows is that you're though that's good. The woody brows is food all year round, 365 right. days a year, where the Forbes is just during the growing season right. mostly. Once you get full leaf off, that's off the menu. Yeah, you know, right. then you got to have your woody brows and your mass crop. Yeah, and that's it, unless you plant something for them. I got a tree. I pruned an apple tree last year, and uh, that tree is loaded. And it's not. I don't think it's loaded because I pruned it last year. I don't think it hurt, you know. I pruned it in January when it's fully dormant. But obviously I think a lot of the conditions were good with yeah. weather, climate, everything, um, because that can make a huge difference on if the blossoms, they take a frost at the wrong time, et cetera. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I got, I mean, that tree is just like every deer in the property. They're there like multiple times a day. Um, apples will go in a bit of a cycle too. We've noticed too, since, um, me and Billy and especially Billy has spent a lot of time in the last three winters clearing apple trees. Yeah. He talks about it a lot. It's kind of been one of his projects, kind of a, a personal project. And, um, but there's still apple trees that are loaded one year and then not the next. And it's not like the whole farm doesn't right. put it where you could say like all the weather the frost because because uh last spring we had two horrible late frosts like the second one was damn near june and yeah. it was a heavy frost and yet most of our apple trees were fine and then this year we never got a frost after mid-april late april wherever yeah. and yet we still have some trees that barely produce but we have others that are just like almost hanging, hanging. on the ground so i don't know if it's variety of apples or or you know or what? But I think it's like acorns, where there's just a lot of factors that don't necessarily in, in, um, affect the whole landscape. Some of them just can be factors from previous from the previous year. That's on red oaks, is yeah, what I red understand. Oaks, yes, because they'll grow like the oaks you see falling this fall were actually last fruit years. from last year. Yeah. So, so there, there's a lot to it. There's a whole science to that, right? Yeah. But right. and I agree with you because I'll have. Like, you can't count on that apple tree hanging every year. Yeah, you can't predict it, I don't think. No. no. Um, but, yeah, so that's what's been going on with me, and I know you got some plot. Are you, you're still putting some in, right? Or you're going to be? Or um, I only have, like, a, I got some overseeding. I got to overseed <laughs> rye on, on some of them, but the I got one plot that we used to hunt over that we're not going to anymore. It's just, it's there's just about an acre that I'm going to plant um, beardless winter wheat in. Because I had some of that last summer that I let go, the onless winter wheat, um, the deer and the turkeys absolutely love it. They'll eat really? every last seed off of it in the summertime. And, uh, the, I mean, the it was a small plot last year, but the deer and turkeys were just, like, constant pictures, bachelor groups of bucks in there, flocks it, of turkeys. What's it called? Kind of so it's, it's, a, it's an on. It's okay. So if you look at a cereal grain in the spring, either wheat or rye, 
if you look closely, you'll have the seed heads on it, but then you'll have like these hairs almost mm-hmm. that are protecting it. They call it a beard or an on. Okay. Well, that that's protecting them <clears> more <throat> for like if you're going to combine that crop, you want you don't want all the deer and turkeys out there and birds and whatever eating all the seeds. Well, they they have a hard time getting to the seeds when it, it's protected. Oh, okay. But there's with wheat, you can get an onless variety that um, doesn't have that beard, that protection. So when the seeds mature and dry down in in uh, midsummer, they're opened right up. They opened up, and the the and the wildlife just absolutely annihilates them, yeah. eats everyone. So I got one plot that I'm going to dedicate to just doing that. I'll probably add cool. some clover in it, either with the planter or else I'll just broadcast in the spring. Yeah. So it'll be an acre of that. Well, and that's what the farmer, wheat. like on the farm when I was a kid, we used to have the winter wheat and we would broadcast clover into yep. it. Medium red clover. And then is we'd the harvest standby. the wheat in July and by, you know, before Labor Day, we were, we were taking a crop of hay off it, right. you know. Yep. Yeah, it's a good rotation and it's a, you know, puts a nitrogen bag. Yeah. More people around here are starting to do stuff like that. It's been nice to see. We're seeing a little more uh, rotational grazing and cover crops around here. You know, even just since, like, me and Billy talked about it a couple yeah. years ago, we're seeing. So Billy's got, uh, he was telling me about the guy with the cereal rye, um, and he's down in Prattsburg, I think. Yeah. So um, I told him, I said, get get some extra, and I'll take some of that. And it doesn't hurt to broadcast that out either, you know. I mean, I'll throw that over. And That's what I was going to say before is, like, if you're going to do nothing, then at least do that because it's, cause if nothing else – even if the deer don't care for it in the fall, yeah, that's going to give you that nice cover in the spring right. to suppress the weeds. So, and if it does take, I mean, they'll feed on that a little bit during the winter. You know, if it's yeah, yeah, yeah so that'll be good. Yeah, it might not be a super hot hunting spot, but it might still. I mean, if it's the only green thing in the area, they're going to eat it. They're going to be there. Yep. So, I mean, that might be all you need to do. It's yeah. cheap and easy. You just got to, you know, with like with anything else, you got to get it down onto the soil. Yep. But um. With rye, I think you can even broadcast it on top and then um, go through with your mower and set it super low, or even your tiller and just set it so that it just takes the all the the weedy material and everything mm-hmm. and just mixes Mix it, up it up and get yeah. that rye down on the ground might even work too. It's really, Just go with a really heavy rate. But we get it for like half price from this guy or less. Yeah, Billy said throw it on. He goes, it's so cheap it doesn't even matter. Yeah. If it doesn't come up, it doesn't come up. It's not cleaned, so you're going to have some weed seeds sure. and some That's debris right. in there or whatever, but it ain't hurting nothing. I yeah. mean... I haven't figured out how to get anything weed free, anyways. So, <laughs> so we'll have to we'll have to talk. I know we got we got a lot going. We got my brother, Chris and and Tim are headed to Colorado on the fourteenth, maybe, of September. Chris used all his points and got a muzzleloader tag for elk, so he's uh, he's going on that. I know AJ. I was talking to AJ, and he and Tard, I think, are going out for elk with archery or muzzleloader, mule deer. What are they doing? You know, I don't know. Um, Tard's real stingy with his points, so he usually will just keep um, keep bow hunting until he's got enough to get a good muzzleloader unit. Yeah, so he's. I know they're going out, so I'd like to catch up with them. I don't know. Do you have anything planned? Other are we are all you going to be able to do the Pennsylvania hunt? You think? Well, like I told Kurt the other day when he called to check on me, I I said, yeah, I'm going to be there. Um, you know, <laughs> if it's so bad that I can't do anything, like if it, say I go out the first day and I just beat myself up then I'll be drawing up maps and I'll be in the truck with a radio screaming at people to do yeah. their job. <laughs> It'll be the, the uh, what do you call that, the forward observation post, and you'll be, like, telling us what to do, where I'll to go. Recon. Yeah. Or I'll just be, like, the Farvo on Super Troopers that's, that's stuck at a radio because he gets in trouble every time he leaves. I got to believe the pack might be bad for you. Yeah, that's... I that's, think you could do the hunt. I think the pack would could cause you some trouble. Yeah, and I think just hunting with a light pack with my gear in it and my food and whatnot, I think will be fine. It's just yeah. I'm not going to be able to you, load up. Yeah, you but, don't want to load up and pack one out, you know. But I don't think uh, I'll have a problem finding help if I need it. Right, yeah, so, exactly. There's usually well, a, good. a group I'm of people. That, uh, so. you know, I was, I'll be there no matter what. Like I said, I, um, I could be a sitter. I'll tell you one thing, though. Um, this hand, even this finger, my thumb right now is cold. Yeah, it looks like it's cold. I it's don't have colored like it's so like even the in the summer when it gets down below like sixty degrees, my hand is or just my thumb will be freezing cold, and I can't to touch it hurts too. So I don't have any idea if I still have the numbness in my fingers. I think I'm going to have a serious problem with cold hand. Yeah, and I don't know. Maybe I'll just wear a super warm 
ridiculously really warm good, glove maybe or yeah. something. I don't know. Or, or get one of those. Um, yeah, I have one of those that I can put. So I, th- put I can get around it. it but yeah. but I think I might just err towards being a sitter more than, yeah. you know, just try not to beat then myself up ground. quite so yeah. bad. And, but sitting might not be comfortable either. I might have to bring a tree stand or something. Or take a light. You know, there's some roots that you've given me in the past that are, you know, you might, they're not. Not as bad. Not as bad, not yeah. as long a root, you know what I mean? Right. And, and uh, so, yeah, you can cherry pick some stuff that will suit you. And <clears throat> I always, because cause normally I give me and Billy and Crispy and Robert, like, the worst possible yeah. jobs because. Crispy's an animal. He's my hero. Right. <laughs> guys, like, same age as me or a little older. I know. And run me in the ground, you know. I know. Because guy's the, unbelievable. Because they won't complain about what I give them. Um, and I, I'm, I can't keep up with either of those guys, but I'll at least – do my best and again i won't bitch because yeah. who am i gonna complain to right, right. so <laughs> and billy he's just like yeah give me the hardest thing possible i don't care and usually yeah. he doesn't have a tag anyway because this bastard yeah. shoots a he buck shoots on, the one first on the first day. day and then he's done so he's like yeah dude i'll do whatever but that's yeah. always the case with him so well, that's good to hear that you'll be able to go down i, yeah, did, I know i I'll talked to billy there. i think he said he's got the houses locked in i us. i wouldn't miss it for the world yeah, yeah he, he gets the houses locked in like as soon as as soon as we pack up and leave, I think yeah. he pretty much because now he's got direct contact with all the owners, so he yeah. doesn't have to go through Airbnb anymore. Yeah. So he saves the fees, and you don't have to wait till a certain amount of time or whatever. He just tells him, "Yep, next year here's the dates," and uh, locks it right in. So yeah, that's awesome. Great hunt. Uh, let me see what else we got to cover. Okay, so this podcast would not be complete without picking your brain on the new DE regulation with uh, no back tags and the paper carcass tags and i don't know if you follow social media <laughs> but there's been a, like it's I turned got, into a joke now people are posting oh, on those so, things oh like God. any anybody hear about the new paperless yeah. tag or paper so, tags or whatever that's like really like i can't believe it. now my brother was like he's like what are you gonna do about that paper tag thing i'm like what are you, what are you gonna do about it what are you gonna do it? you know and he goes well how am i supposed to prove I, a license you know and i'm like I'm like, you're going to have to carry your, carry your, your uh, carcass tags because he's got a flip phone. He goes, what am I going to do with this? I'm, I wanted to say, well, you could get yourself a smartphone. It is, you know, 2024, for God's sakes. But at any rate, um, I thought it was – I always go down to town. I like seeing the town clerk. Yeah. And, and so we, we do know too now. But I didn't go this year. I'm like, I'm going to – I wonder what it's like. So I did the whole thing electronic, went on the computer, punch in my doc number, confirm date of birth, bada bing, bada boom. I'm in. I'll take one of these, one of these, one of these, one of these, one of these. Which put, all is normal so far. Yeah, put that in the cart. That was all good. And then after you have that in the cart, I can't remember. I thought I would have to buy it before I could get my dough tags. I think I could, maybe I just had to have it in the cart. I don't know. But anyways, I canceled out. You know, I, I bought that, closed that out or whatever. And then I went, I'm, I'm like, oh, dough tags. So I went back and I selected my two, you know, 8N, 8H. And I don't know if they're five or ten bucks a piece or whatever. Put that in the cart, paid for that, boom, boom, and there your tags pop up. I printed them to a PDF. I got them on my computer only because I was out of paper. But and I'll, I'll print them out and I'll just uh, you know it's no big deal. Take a Ziploc bag and an electrical tape. I always have those two things yeah. on me anyway. Okay, so that's one argument that people have a problem with is that they're gonna ha- the paper tags. You're gonna have to be careful to not ruin them or whatever. Yeah. But the main concern from everybody is the fact that criminals are going to print out multiple copies of the tag. Yep. And it's, but me and you aren't going to do that because we were going to follow the law to begin with right. and tag our deer and call we, them in. There could be no changes and we're, we're not going to break the law. You can change it. I'm not breaking the law. So, My take on that is that anybody that's going to do unethical things, we're, are, we're right. going to do it or did it before. So Maybe you made it easier. Right. I don't know. I th- so, again, the argument with this now is... <laughs> Somebody that wants to bend the rules, or that, that's not even bending, that's flat out breaking, breaking the rules. Yeah. Now they can shoot whatever buck they want, for example, whatever deer, right? Yeah. Because there's areas where it's hard to get a doe tag. You might have right. one, right? So they're going to shoot a deer, they're going to tag it with the paper tag, and they're going to transport it home until they get it somewhere safe where nobody's right. going to see it. And if they get stopped in the meantime, they, they'll have they a got tag. The ta- right. But as soon as they get home, they could, in theory, remove that tag, print out another one, go hunting again. Yeah. That's what everyone's worried about. But, you know, my mind is the crooks are crooks, and if that's what they're going to do, then I don't know. I guess it, they were going to do it either way. Did we make it easier? I don't know. Before, what I, they were doing, though, is just printing out. They were having their wife and their brother-in-law and everybody they know that doesn't hunt. They were just having them get their license and yeah. fill in their tags. So 
Come here. So potentially those those tags could have been reported before and then looked legit, but they actually weren't, right? Yeah. Although I guess they had to pay for them. So I, I think it's no like I mean, it's but a, a lot of it, other states do it too. Yeah, it's a change, and but yeah. so what, right? It's uh, I I don't know. It's uh, I can't see getting worked up over it, and uh, well, I'm not it is what it is, and it works fine. And uh, hey, I don't know if we're last last was it last year or year before was the first time I've lost my back tags, and I think I was in the Adirondacks on a early season like muzzleloader hunt. And uh, we killed a deer, and we were carrying it back. And gosh darn if I I lost my gl- eyeglasses and my back tag. Right. And uh, we got the eyeglasses, but tags were gone. So Well, shit happens. And, you know, that's a good point, too. Before, they could have a, – a criminal could have done the same thing before. Put the DEC tag on it, took the deer home, removed yeah. the tag, and then called and said, I lost my tag. Just report it lost, and they'll print you out new ones. Yeah, and you might have to pay $5 for that. Yeah. So it would have cost him an extra $5 yeah. to do the same thing. So I guess the DC is going to lose that $5 now. Right. There always was ways around this shit. It's right. always an honor system thing unless you get checked. Right. It's always an honor system. Yeah. I mean, you got to call in. That, that's always been, and that was my, <laughs> listen, that's human nature. You're going to have people that are sticklers. They go by the rules. They're honest as a day is long. And then you're going to have people that like to play games with that stuff and do things that are unethical or maybe even un- illegal and, you know, we're not going to stop that, and we're not going to make it any worse probably because, yeah, you know, put 10 people in a room, and if two of them play that game and eight of them don't, it's the eight that don't aren't going to – we didn't, we're not going to make bad guys out of good guys yeah. is what I'm saying. Well, and if so you, it's no big deal. It's, if you think about it too, like there's always – like almost everybody bends the the rules of – not just hunting, but life in some way or another, right? Like yeah. driving 56 miles an hour in a 55. Right. Well, technically, you're not supposed to go over 55. But right. like before I was, you know, can I can I swear that I never shot a deer one or two minutes after sundown right. when sundown was the law before? No. Right. You could, Everybody, to a certain extent, has got to figure out where their line is, you know? I mean, yeah. it's always something. Right. I mean, um, there's, there's even little in- intricacies that – people interpret different ways. Yeah. You know, you might think you're doing something the right way and I might think it's wrong because I don't read that law yeah, the same way. I didn't read way. it that way, yeah. You got one syllabus. That happens all the time when you yeah. go out of state, yeah. you know. There's some people, and I, I think this is just TV people, I don't think anyone in the real world does this, but there's some people that'll go on a hunting trip and shoot a deer and not recover it and they'll punch their tag. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've well, heard of that, especially like with elk and stuff. Yeah. I'm not doing that. Yeah. Why <laughs> would you not? Well, they feel that they shot an animal and they didn't recover maybe it, it's so lethal, they lost. Maybe they feel it was a lethal shot and they didn't recover, so they punched their tag and that's that. And I don't know. I mean, it's not required, and if you do that, fine. But it's like I got two more days to hunt and I don't have the. And animal I drove that, all the way out west, yeah, and it's I mean, not I feel saying bad about it. And, but. and it's not saying that I won't spend the rest of the time looking for that animal. But mm-hmm. it's one thing if you just shot one and he ran over the the mountain. And he's bleeding everywhere, and another one, and the bigger one came by, and you, you shot, shot that. that. Now yeah, you're, yeah. you know, yeah. now that's that's not cool. But you know, again, there's a line there somewhere that yeah. um, can be interpreted a lot of different. There's no yeah. law that says, in any state that I've ever hunted, I've never read a law that said that if you shoot an animal and don't recover it, that you're not able to shoot another one. Right. If you want to make that decision on your own, that's your own prerogative. You right. go ahead and sure. do that. Yeah. And if it makes you but, sleep better at night, great. But I think a lot of people just do that for TV. Yeah. I can't see doing it. Yeah. Especially, I saw Randy Newberg do it once, I think, is one that did it. But okay, but he hunts for a living. Yeah. It's not going to matter if he... He's going to be in Nevada hunting again tomorrow, you know, or Utah or something. He spent a week looking for this mule deer that he shot, and I don't even know if he recovered it or not. But he he said, I'm not going to shoot another one. But again, yeah, he spends his whole life hunting out west. But me, if I drive all the way out there, and I shoot shoot a deer with an arrow or an elk, and, and I try my best, and look for it for two days, and I don't recover yeah. it. I'm I'm gonna hunt until the trip's over and try to shoot another one. Right. You know? Yeah. I don't know, we're getting off on a tangent here, but I, I just think that's rabbit hole. But if you know what it, the the law is, then follow it. Yeah. And if somebody else doesn't, well, then then yeah. don't worry about I'll that. I'll tell you what. I like I like the fact, you know, as much as believe me, we could. It's a whole another rabbit hole to go down with the gun laws and ammunition all that. But point being. There are some good things that, you know, we're seeing some wiggle room on the age. Over the last several years, we got the holiday hunt. Right. Um, and who knows, maybe at some point we'll see some 
some more flexibility. We do have like you, you just got a, a doctor's note for a crossbow. So and, and and I I think this is a ultimately it'll be a convenience thing. I don't have to leave the house to get my tags. Right. And if you have a lifetime tag, they're mail. Well, you didn't you. have to before. You could get them online before. Yeah, they just yeah. would mail them to you. Right. But this is just like it's super easy. Yeah. Bada bing, bada boom. You're done. You know. Well, the bottom line is it's it's saving the state some money by not having those tags, and yeah, that and pisses people off too because they yeah. think they should take that cost off of the off your license. Yeah. But it might be the other way where they're going to say, "Well, we got to raise everyone's hunting license." five dollars this year what can we do to right. to the, not do that exactly okay well here's an idea let's make paper tags yeah do i and think it's the best idea i don't know but i mean i guarantee there's some you know everyone that's another thing that everyone's saying is well it didn't come off the price of my tags well maybe they were going to add to it and yeah, they decided tag not didn't to go up i don't think they went up no so and that's a that's an excellent point so well we should wrap it up we've kept you long enough and you got to head off to arcport I just wanted to say one more thing about her that I, that back to her stories is that I didn't know a kid could be so cool. <laughs> I mean, she just under pressure. You mean? Yeah, yeah. she's she shot at two deer and a turkey and and uh, hit them all. You know, two hard shots and then the turkey was <laughs> was not perfect. But, but it was that where was, you said to was, shoot it. Yep, it was just off center a touch, but. But um, even after the shot, she doesn't get all worked up and adrenaline or anything like that, and. Uh, I think that's part partly to, to attribute to just who she is and uh, um, playing sports and doing all kinds of stuff like that, you know, that she's always under pressure. But I also think it's the fact that she's hunted with me for several years and, and Grandpa, and we've killed probably upwards of 20 deer with you. Oh, you've been in a lot of them. Though. Oh, yeah. Well, all gun kills. My uh, favorite you know. one. Um was well it wasn't your deer but you guys all shot at it the really big one mm-hmm. that aj got that aj got a couple of years ago yep that one she was, was fun i didn't know you were there for that one yep it was five of us brad yeah. brad trigger like, aj and me and her it was yeah. really funny there i there was everyone was just screaming it was like big deer because we were set up on the one path for big deer and then all of a sudden it came over and we were like oh and then i knew it was big and then i got over there and i was like whoa <laughs> <laughs> that's really big Brad was screaming, big buck, big buck, Brian, Brian, get out there, get out there, or whatever, you know, because they were in such thick shit, they couldn't yeah. get a shot at it. Well, Brad could have killed it in its bed, but he thought it was the, there. I guess there's a couple of big bucks that only had had already shed one side oh, so or he thought broken. It was, only had one side. He could only see the one side, so he thought it was a shed buck, and then it stood up, and he's like, oh, my God. Like, and I didn't even know they could get that big. Like He's like, all I could think to do was throw up or yell at Brian for him to go shoot it, and, <laughs> and Brian had it come right by him, and he couldn't get a shot. It went right in between all of us, though. Like, everyone yeah. took a shot at it. And then the last guy was AJ yeah. right out in the field, as I recall. I was the first one to shoot. The two didn't originally get to shoot. It got okay. out into the this field and but it was all it was a brushy field but yeah you couldn't even get what do you so what do you do sometimes don't you sometimes drop to a knee yeah you couldn't do that i almost always drop to a knee if i can but this was like a 125 yard shot so you just had to stick up the gun when i knelt he was quartered away from me with this doe but when i knelt down there was a bush right in front of him and i couldn't see anything so i stood back up and the deer's just standing there standing there and i'm like well if i don't just I'm like, he's just standing there. I'm like, if I don't shoot at him, I just will never forgive myself. So, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so it was like an offhand tried to shoot him in the neck at a hundred and a quarter, you know, and I missed. And it, but fortunately, when I did miss, he jumped right out into the field in front of AJ, and he killed him. And okay. The doe killed him. The doe is why. Yeah. You know, there's obviously this was that was late. your favorite one though, huh, Emma? Yeah. Of all of them. Yeah. But there was deep snow that year too. That very, was the year that we had the deep yeah. snow where you yeah, and we got another storm. Yeah, another storm came right because Christmas we couldn't go. Nobody could go to anywhere for Christmas that yeah. year too. So this was the holiday oh, hunt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess it must have been the holiday hunt. Yeah, and you guys were way steep in snow out here. Yeah, we actually like, were only about five hundred yards from the truck, and we still packed that deer out, quartered it in oh, our did, backpacks oh, yeah, because it was such a hard drag. Some yeah. of the guys were like. Oh, we could just, I'm mean, like, I, I, you drag it. I'm not doing that. Yeah, <laughs> I go, I'll you quarter me. it out. But yeah. It took a while, too. It was yeah. Like, and we then had, you shot a deer, but you weren't happy with it. Like, jeez. We had a hard time getting the, uh, he wanted to mount it, so he caped it, and it was hard to get that back oh. apart with it caped. But, uh, but back to the original point, though, she's been with us for so much stuff and seen so much, you know, that situation with the gun 
that moment of truth, you know. Yeah. In the aftermath and the tracking. We're almost done, buddy. Gutting and quartering and all that stuff. She's been such a part of that that I think it felt a little way more natural. Because the only thing that changed was she was the one with the gun, and and that is a big difference. It's a huge change, yeah. But she's just so accustomed to deer hunting, and successful deer hunting. Yeah, you know, being around it. Yeah. Wow. So the moral of the story is start is them early. take your kids hunting, I'm even the if best they. Deer hunter ever. What's that? I said I'm the best deer hunter ever. Of course. Let's see how you do she's this. She's funny year. too. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right, it all could change in a second. You know, you haven't had a chance to get buck fever yet or anything. I know. Like I was going to say, do you get like excited or does your heart get racing? You're shaking before the shot or anything? No, no. Really I'll tell you, um, that second doe that she shot, she was really cool on that because the deer were moving off, and we didn't think we were going to get a shot. And I was even like panicking, like, "Oh my god, we got to." I was partly nervous because I had fucked the whole thing up by not opening the windows. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, like, I was like, oh, my God, these deer are going to get away from us. And um, it was getting, like, it was right the last couple minutes of shooting light. And, uh, like, six of them ran up the hill and out of our lives. And for whatever reason, these two stayed back at the bottom. And they were looking around like, hey, what's everybody running for? And I didn't even notice those deer because I was watching the tails go up over the hill. And she's the one that, like, Dad, there's two still down there, and that one's really big. And, And that was another thing, too, is... We've shot so many because we've shot mostly doe together. Yeah, a lot of so she, young hunters can't identify. The <clears> not at all. But she world. knew the one in Latchworth was a small one. Yeah. She told me before she's like it's small, but I don't care. And I'm like, yep, go ahead. But this one, she's like, Dad, that's a big one down there, right? And I looked, and I mean, I was even having. I was like, yeah, I think that's a good one, Emma. And it was broadside. And once I told her that she could shoot, I mean, she just boom, you know, right <laughs> on it, you know, no problem. And but she doesn't when she shoots. I said there's that blackout thing where I kind of do it too, where I'm just looking at the reaction of the deer because um, I don't, I'm not a good target shooter. Like put me on paper and I'm, I have a hard time sighting in a rifle. Well, I can get it good enough, but yeah, I can't put those bullet holes in yeah. the same hole. Right. You can put no. If dad sights in a, a rifle and a load for me, cause that's important too. It's that's part of the problem is you got to get the right load. Yeah. If he comes back and tells me it's, it's good then I can shoot in paper and put it right in there. But if I'm trying to, if there's too many variables, like if I'm trying to figure it out, I have a hard time. Like I ch- I'll chase myself in circles and I'll yeah. waste a bunch of ammo. Yeah. So now I just like, I'll just give it to him and be like, here, fix this. That's what my brother always <laughs> does. He gives me the gun here, sign it in. Yeah. For and whatever then, reason, he goes, you can sit there and just put them right, like if it's on. Yeah. And or it, even if it's off, I mean, all three bullet holes right. ought to be in the same spot, you know, which gives you an indicator which way to go, right? So no, one of the one of the biggest things in hunting is having confidence in your weapon, yeah. right? Yeah. You never want to you never want to miss or wound a deer and then say, was that me or was that the gun? Yeah, you always want to know that it's you. Yeah, you go, is this gun off? Right. If you're asking that question, yeah. that's a wrong time to ask that one. Right. So. Oh. Well, I have a habit of dropping my guns too because of the terrain that we hunt in. Yes, and I I'm always hunt with a with scope. Them. I've done that with my. Oh. Yeah, I've fallen so many times and dropped them and hit the scopes and everything. Who's the one that shot a smaller deer than me? John. Yes, oh, John I did. didn't shoot the smallest deer this year. So <laughs> I'll tell you what, that was a heck of a shot that John had. Though. He hit the something that small running wide open across <laughs> that field. Yeah, yeah, that was when he's come back. That it was tiny, tiny, tiny. Yeah, he's but, another one that doesn't really miss much. So No, that guy can shoot. He's like, well, Mike wanted antlerless deer killed, so I right? got one. <laughs> well, you don't want to let the guy down. He had us yeah. out there to take right. some deer out, you know. So, Of course, we run into a figure, you know, leave it to us. We're out there to shoot some does, and we run into a pack of giant bucks before we even barely yeah. get started. Yeah. And that Me takes and her up aren't even in day. our spot yet, and they're all, all hooting and hollering down there like, yeah. what the fuck? <laughs> Unbelievable. And then I had that was the day that I had the I had the does come right on the last drive come or second to last drive they come across the field I'm standing in just this open grove of trees and they're coming right at me mm-hmm. and I think Brad was out in front of me and somebody maybe it was you was it was over. us too yeah but I'm there, and they're coming right at me and I'm like I just let we never keep, seen the deer let them keep coming let them keep coming they come right up I let them go by me so they're away from Brad and you guys yeah. wide open I go there we go and they just kind of pause I had the crosshairs on. Like <laughs> pouring rain all day long, but I think, <coughs> excuse me, the, I think the primer I was using, I think I picked it up off the bathroom vanity. 
And I bet you that son of a gun went through the laundry. I will never do that again. If mm. I find one outside my hunting gear, yeah. I'm going to throw it away. I do that, too, because they're cheap. It cost me a deer. Yeah, they're, they're, they're cheap compared to, you know. Yeah. It was right there. Powder and bullets are expensive. Yeah, Brad calls on the radio. Cheap. He's like, <laughs> did you see them? Did you, or, no, yeah. I, at first, I said, no. I, he goes, why didn't you shoot at them deer? I go, what deer? <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> And I couldn't hear, and I didn't see anything. I'm like, oh my god, they went right by me. I think I don't. You couldn't have got a shot anyway. But no, I never saw. But who they. So Emma, do you? Uh, you who was does the smell of freshly tilled soil? Does that do anything? Does that she bring you a know what that is? Huh? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> but who was that I, one? I do when you're right. The same place that we were at, um, with the big buck, but. With the bigger group this time. Who were the one where the deer went in, like, the field and they were, like, walking down and all of a sudden everyone was screaming and, like, I don't know what happened. Oh, like, yeah. it came out and everyone was like, deer, deer, deer. And they yeah. were like, where? Like, Oh, the one deer that came those? out? Yeah. Like, it wasn't even part of the drive. No. It just happened to step out in front of, like, 18 guys. It came running. One of the guys that must have went oh, way around somebody kicked went, it across went the field. Somebody went way back north and come yeah. back and we're all watching. We're like, here comes a deer. down. we're like, we're hey, gonna, guys, turn around. But they were below it and there was a hedgerow. So the deer finally came through and got way out oh there and somebody God. took it. I don't even know who took a crack at it. But, but someone took a shot. It was funny. Yeah. yeah, that deer ran out in the wrong spot. Well, maybe it ran out in the right spot because it's still yeah. running as far as we know. But Well, hey, thanks for joining me for uh, On the Deck with Dallas and Emma. <laughs> and, uh, you know, getting into hunting season, I, I've – Time to get back to my podcasting a little bit here. I had to take the summer off, get all my work done. But Emma, it's finally great to uh, catch up with you, and I hope I uh, hope you have just as much success here in the next season. And you, do, lifetime, you going to get her lifetime license or did you? I haven't yet. No? So every time I think of it, it's like eh, I don't think that's the in my budget right now. Do you so. get the tags yet? You get no. your license. I think we're going to do that next week. We're going to yeah. go up to the town clerk. What about uh, do you have other you have other children, young all younger than Emma? Is Emma the no, she's the middle. Oh, okay, my, my older one Ava, she's got no interest in it. She likes to eat it. That's which right. is good, but no interest in the hunting. And then Julia's on the fence. Um, <coughs> she's showing some interest. How she's, old is she? She's eight. So she's been shooting the BB gun, and she's gone out a couple times with me in the blind and. Um, First time I went out, there was a really small deer, and I told you to shoot it, yeah. and you shot it. <laughs> she was literally the devil over my shoulder because we were sitting. Like, a, shoot it, Dad. We were sitting on the ground. <laughs> yes. And, look, and it, this deer was on the other side of the ravine. There were two of them, and I knew they were small. But it was late season snow, so we didn't have, like, it was almost end of the season. And she was seven, I believe. And so she hadn't been able to see a deer get killed yet. And uh I was, we had seen them right from when we got there. They were laying on the side hill, and I kept saying, I'm like, well, I don't see the doe there. She must be around. So we waited until it was almost end of shooting light. And uh, and then I'm like, I got to make a decision here, you know. And she's like, shoot it. Shoot it. She's <laughs> literally, sta- I'm on the three-point stance on the ground, and she's here. And, it, you know, my conscience is going, mm, don't do it, don't yeah, do it. Because I'll always, you know, I never shoot them. And uh, she's over here going, shoot it. <laughs> shoot it shoot it now i wanted to see it when i was little and all of a sudden i felt my safety come off and when that once that happens it's yeah, it's, it's game over. it's lights out man yeah. you know <laughs> <laughs> also the one time that we were like in that path you know where you shot that one buck okay that was kind of big like the place Oh. When AJ shot his big buck and we went like, in. yeah, yeah, you got one that year too. Yeah, I got a, that same day. I got yeah, that one just leap. came right in front of us and just stopped. Mm-hmm. You like weren't happy with it, like it had so much meat. Yeah, it was a big fat year and a half old buck. Oh, we had the the one. It was probably a year after the shoot it deer that uh, because then we went on a podcast after that, and that's when she said really cold and cold, cold and, and wet. wet. Yeah. Or cold and fun, I think. Oh, it is. cold and fun, yeah. maybe. It's, yeah. Really, yes, you're right. really, yeah. really, really cold and fun. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> so then uh, the next, so she got a kick up being out of being on the podcast. So the next year, um, I shot a doe, a big doe, with her, and um, I hit her a little bit low, and she turned and ran towards us, and I had to take a second shot, and I dropped her like ten yards in front of us, and she jumps up off the. She was like hiding behind a tree, so she sees the deer die, and she just. Jumps out from behind the tree and goes, I want to be on a podcast. <laughs> that was the first thing she said. <laughs> Not congrats, Dave. No, I, was, I want to be on the podcast. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's yeah. awesome. All right. Well, Paul. hey, 
Good luck, Emma, this season. I'm sure I'll see you on some of the hunts. She coming to PA with us on the big one? No. Not yet? Not yet. She was Not so yet. convinced that she wanted to do that, but she's she's going to go on. That was before yeah. you ever took me to PA, right. and then you took me to PA. And you're like, and whoa. Yeah. yeah. But we'll, well probably we'll, still we'll, do a Saturday we'll, hunt together. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe I'll get down there with you sometime. Yeah, you know, well, be fun. I'm, I, this is with, with having the kids now and Kurt's doing the same thing. I mean, we plan on going – all three of those weekends, you know. Yeah. So opening day, well, I found a uh, a new place to stay now too. Um, there's a campground down there on six that has cabins that are open all year. Oh, nice! And um, you get a two bed. Uh, it's a bunk bed and another twin bed. No bathroom. You can get with a bathroom, but without one, it's like thirty some dollars a night. And there's a bathhouse, really nice bathhouse, right like across it's the across, driveway. Like it's so nowhere. Yeah. All you gotta do is walk out of the cabin and go into the bathhouse. So it's like thirty some bucks a night. That's the way it was night. in Colorado, where I stayed with that outfitter. They had one yeah. bathhouse, and the cabins were around. You just step out your cabin, you know, you take. Yeah. So you back the truck right up to the cabin. Yeah. Loads you got a fire there. pit. You can you can grill or whatever, yeah. and it's so cheap that it's worth going. Nice. You know, you don't have to check in or check out at the office. Yeah. They just leave you the key. Nice. So it makes it worth going for those, like, yeah. instead of trying to do that all day Saturday where you drive yeah. down, drive back, you can just stay one there day. Friday night or Saturday night or both yeah. or whatever. So Awesome. Well, maybe I'll get down there with you one time this year yeah. on that. You know, go with the kids and look yeah. forward to it. All, all right. right. Hey, thanks for joining me. Keep feeding them. Keep feeding them. Later, everybody.